Okay. I'd like to call the regular uh, council meeting of Bellflower City Council, acting on behalf of the successor agency and dissolved Bellflower Redevelopment Agency and Bellflower Financing Authority to order Monday, May 14th, 2018 at 7 p.m. Uh, let the record uh, reflect that all council members are present. And could uh, I have everybody stand for the invocation led by myself and the Pledge of Allegiance thereafter by Public Safety Joel Hockman. Oh, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, thank you for all you do. Please bless our actions here tonight and assist us in building a strong and caring community. Bless all our residents and uh, help us take care of the less fortunate. May you lend us your wisdom to find solutions for the issues that come before us. We thank you for the opportunity to help others and the opportunity to try to improve our way of life. We ask for your protection and blessings on our military men and women, and may they always return safely to their families. In your name, amen. 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 Please uh, face the flag and join me in saying, I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. <clears throat> okay. do some council uh, presentations right now and uh, I'm gonna go first. Uh, I'm excited to share the great news a week ago today that the city of Bellflower hosted a long awaited groundbreaking ceremony for Steelcraft. As uh, a city, we are excited that the downtown Bellflower will soon be home of the third location of Steelcraft. The long awaited vendors were finally revealed which include 10 mile brewing, standing room only, the Fritzy Coop, Steelcraft is anticipated to open this fall of this year. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Sandy, Sandy Eds. Thank you, Mayor. Another piece of exciting news. Bellflower is happy to announce the grand reopening of Richie's Italian restaurant. That's Richie's. Some, some people call it Ricky's, like potato, potato. As you recall, uh, Richie's has to relocate because of the widening of the uh, Bellflower Boulevard south of the freeway. The official ceremony will be held on Thursday, May 24th at 4 p.m. at the new location at 16601 Bellflower Boulevard. In the meantime, the owner has recently opened the restaurant for during varying hours for soap opening so you can be able to try the food before the official ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> uh, we invite everyone to come and celebrate another addition to our downtown. For more information, visit the website at www. <coughs> Bellflower.org. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Ron Stomblinger. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I want to invite you to our Neighborhood Watch informational session held Wednesday, May 16th from 7 to 9 p.m. in the Bellflower City Hall upstairs on the second floor. Come and learn about the Neighborhood Watch and the benefits of participating in this program. This session is sponsored by the City of Bellflower Public Safety Department. Come and get to know your neighbors and win raffle prizes. Please RSVP to Sacramento Ramos, our Neighborhood Watch Coordinator at area code 562-254-0124, extension 2531. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Snodberger. Council Member Juan Garza. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. I want to take a moment and acknowledge the Metropo uh, Metropolitan Transportation Authority and their work in our community. Metro wants to thank everyone that participated in the community update meetings for the West Santa Ana Branch Transit Corridor Project on April 30 in downtown LA and also on May 3 in the city of Paramount. That was in addition to uh, numerous other meetings that took place during the month of March as well. The meetings all together brought, um, brought together over 
brought together hundreds of community <coughs> members during this process. Participants were provided with project updates, opportunities to speak to project team members, and provide feedback on the proposed alignment options. If you missed the opportunity to attend the meetings, Metro will be offering another meeting tomorrow, Tuesday, May 15th at 7 p.m. at the Downey City Hall and the Council Chambers. For more information, you can visit our website at www.bellflower.org. And I also would like to add that uh, the presentation, some of the discussion that you'll hear tomorrow, you will also hear here, here tonight during the presentation from Metro as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Garza. And last but not least, Councilmember Dan Coops. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As a reminder, the city's next general municipal election will be held on Tuesday, November 6, 2018. That's for City Council Districts 1, 3, and 5. This election will be consolidated with the con general election conducted by the Los Angeles County Registrar of Voters. Our goal is to make this transition as smooth as possible. Therefore, if you have any questions about this election or voter registration or have any questions about any of the election coming up, please call the council district you, if you reside in. Please contact the city clerk's office, that's at 562-804-1424, extension 2271. Or of course, you can always do the email, cclerk at valfire.org. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Coops. Okay, now can I uh, meet, have my colleagues meet me on the, uh, up front on the podium there? And we're gonna get a National Public Works Week proclamation accepted by Phil Wang and Brad Binder from the Public Works Department and uh, ask me. <coughs> Okay, we got uh, National Public uh, Works Week. That's May 20th through the 26th, I believe. And uh, that's coming up, and this is the council meeting before that happens, is why we're doing it a little early. And uh, we always do s nice things with the Public Works Department at this time, have a little luncheon and whatever, and, and see what to do. Um, without Public Works, we wouldn't have a community. It's, it's basically the glue that holds this town together as far as the streets, curbs, gutters, and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, with that said, I mean, we know you're behind the scenes and you work really hard on those, all those streets and doing all that kind of stuff, and we really appreciate it. And with that, on, uh, on behalf of the City of Bellflower and my colleagues, we want to uh, give you this proclamation for what you guys do. <laughs> okay, it's photo time. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite Supervisor Janice Hahn uh, up to the podium for comments about the transit quarter. Hi, Janice. Hi. Uh, good evening, Mayor Dunn and members of the uh, City Council of uh, this wonderful city of Bellflower. So it's a great city. It's great listening to your mm -hmm. announcements. I'm very excited about Steelcraft mm -hmm. coming here. Uh, I, I, I know the one in Long Beach, and it is, uh, always creates a lot of excitement, uh, always very busy. Uh, people uh, really come and uh, enjoy uh, that. So a big coup for Bellflower to, to get the third one, as you said. Exactly. Excited about uh, Ricky's, Ricci's, Ricci's. Ricci's. restaurant. <laughs> I, wouldn't buy, be, I wouldn't mind being one of those that comes early and checks out the food, just to make sure it's mm -hmm. okay for the rest of the residents. Um, <laughs> Thanks for letting me be here tonight. I just wanted to come and make a few uh, prepared remarks 
before you see the presentation uh, from Metro. And um, it's going to be about the West Santa Ana uh, light rail project. I've started calling it the Artesia Line because it starts in Artesia uh, <laughs> and it ends in uh, downtown Los Angeles. And I think a lot of people are confused by the name West Santa Ana Branch. It really mm -hmm. has nothing to do uh, right. with Santa Ana. But uh, I want to thank each and every one of you in, uh, in this city for your leadership uh, on this project, for your history, um, working to actually get us here. Uh, to this point on this project, and it's because, because of our partnership with uh, your cities uh, and other cities um, that I'm confident that we're going to get this project built uh, and across the finish line while we're all still alive. Um, as you see, as you're going <coughs> to see tonight in Metro's presentation, um, this uh, Artesia line or the West Santa Ana branch, it's the 20 mile long light rail project that will start in Artesia. Uh, go through 13 of the gateway cities, including Downey, Paramount, Bellflower, and end in downtown Los Angeles. And soon, uh, the Metro Board of Directors will be considering three different routes uh, as it ends in downtown Los Angeles, including a convenient direct route to Union Station, uh, and that's going to be known as Alternative E, uh, which is my favorite. I say E for excellent. Uh, and then two other alternatives. Um, and we'll have to, we're going to listen to everybody and see what the best route is to choose. Um, and I don't have to tell you that your residents have waited a long time for a transportation project that actually uh, is convenient, is efficient, and can connect them uh, to downtown Los Angeles. And they want it built right. And I believe. Uh, that your residents want a transfer-free, one-seat ride to Union Station. I think your commuters heading to downtown LA uh, don't really want to uh, waste time and energy with extra transfers. And the Metro Board of Directors, which I'm a member of, will be making a choice uh, soon uh, between these three routes that, will be, that you will hear about uh, tonight. Uh, but I've asked Metro to hold one more meeting, which uh, uh, Councilmember Garza mentioned, tomorrow in Downey, so that if your residents uh, want an opportunity to speak up and have their voice heard, uh, they can attend that meeting uh, tomorrow night in Downey. It's their last opportunity uh, to tell Metro staff about the route options and to tell uh, Metro what they want. And I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to say they want alternative E. Uh, no transfer, no excuses. They want to get on the light rail and end up in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I've advocated for this project's timeline to be accelerated. When I first heard that the timeline was like, uh, you know, 2045 or 2050, I thought that uh, that is not possible. Our voters overwhelmingly voted for Measure M, uh, which will. Uh, you know, add on a, a, a half cent sales tax, we'll, we'll raise about $120 billion uh, to build these projects. But your residents and my constituents don't want to wait that long till this project is built. So I think uh, with a lot of effort from uh, the private sector uh, and investments, we're going to up this timeline uh, to 2028. So that'll be years uh, ahead of what they originally said. But I believe we can do that by all coming together and voicing our uh, one voice on how we want this built. So I'm committed to seeing this project completed on time, on budget. And I really want to thank you, Mayor, and members of this wonderful city council of this wonderful city, uh, and your wonderful residents of Bellflower for your support, for your involvement uh, in, in building this uh, light rail. Uh, that will connect us finally to downtown Los Angeles. So thank you. I hope you enjoy, enjoy the presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Hahn. Uh, Mr. Mayor, from MTA, we have Laura Cornejo who is going to make the presentation to the council okay. tonight. And you, it's your option mm -hmm. if you want to sit there and hear it. Doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. okay. I can do yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, while uh, Laura is getting set up, I just uh, I just wanted to thank the supervisor for being here today. Um, it's truly an honor to have you here. 
Um, you've been a great champion of this project for our region, and I want to make sure that I acknowledge that in public so that our residents know that you've been a true champion for us here um, in our city. So okay. thank you for all your efforts um, and, uh, and fighting for us on, the, on that Metro Board. We're looking forward to that vote on the 24th. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, thank you very much for inviting us to be here tonight. Um, I'm Laura Cornejo, I'm Deputy Executive Officer with Metro's Planning Department, and with me tonight is Julia Brown, our Community Relations Manager. So to begin, um, as Supervisor Hahn already shared with you, the West Santa Ana Branch is a 20 mile line that starts in the city of Artesia and goes through a number of Southeast communities ending in downtown Los Angeles. The project is guided by five overarching goals. The first is to provide mobility improvements. Included within this goal is a recognition that the West Santa Ana Branch project is really um, aimed at connecting the southeast cities to downtown, to the rest of the metro rail network, addressing traffic impacts, and providing communities with a transportation alternative. In doing so, we're also looking to support local and regional land use plans and policies. We want to make sure that we're supporting local cities so that when the line does get built and there are stations within your city, the surrounding land uses really do are, really are transit supportive and that we're supporting your city and making sure that those land uses reflect the vision and goals that you have at a local level. To that end, we do have a parallel but separate transit-oriented communities effort that is taking place. Um, your city and your staff is very much engaged in, in that process in developing a vision and a plan for the station areas which Metro is fully committed in helping you realize and bring into reality. The third project goal is to avoid or minimize environmental impacts. Fourth, it's to ensure a cost-effective and financially feasible project. And lastly, to promote equity. We initiated the draft environmental phase this last summer with the scoping period, and at that time, we shared these four alignments. Really quickly, um, starting to the furthest east, closest to the Los Angeles River, we have two lines on the northern end that would begin parallel or begin along P Pacific, which becomes Santa Fe, and would terminate at Union Station. The other two lines um, that you see here, C and D, would begin parallel to the blue line, um, run along Alameda in an aerial configuration, and then terminate at Union Station. When we went out to the community in the summer, we received a number of comments, about 11, more than 1,100 comments, and several of those comments were specific to the, these northern alignments. And in order to be responsive to those comments that we received, Metro went back to the drawing board and added four more northern alternatives to be considered. Again, starting to the eastern side, closest to the Los Angeles River, we began with option H, which would be in an underground configuration um, and then turning north uh, parallel to the Los Angeles River with a station at the Arts District 6th Street area. If the board were to carry this alignment forward, we would also look at how we could extend either the red or the purple line to connect to the 6th Street station in order to provide a transfer opportunity for those wishing to go on into Union Station. Then we have concepts E and F, both of which would run parallel to the blue line and run in an underground configuration along Alameda. F would then veer slightly uh, east and then transition from an underground alignment into an aerial alignment terminating at Union Station. E would continue in an underground configuration along Alameda, terminating on the west side of Union Station, um, so closest to Alameda Street. We are also exploring another terminus option, which would be just east of the MWD building, also near Union Station. The last alignment that we added in response to public comments is G. This alignment would begin in a parale parallel to the blue line and then transition into an underground configuration, turning west along 8th Street, terminating in what we are referring to as a downtown transit core. For G, we are exploring two potential termini. The first would serve the 7th Metro station area where we would have a station roughly at about 8th and Flower with a pedestrian connection to 7th and Metro Station. 
The second terminus that we are studying would serve the Pershing Square station. Uh, with this option, we would look at a station close to Fifth and Broadway, also with a pedestrian connection to the Pershing Square area. We've gone out and we've um, had a number of meetings, which I'll cover in a couple of slides. We've also done some technical analysis and we've done a little bit of engineering to ensure that these are constructible, to ensure that they are operable with Metro system. And based on our technical analysis and comments we've heard from the community, what we will be recommending to the board is to carry these three options into the environmental document for further study. They are options G, serving the downtown transit core area, option E, serving the Union Station, and option F, also serving Union Station. So at this point, we are not asking the board to select one alternative. We are asking them to consider carrying these three northern alignment options for further study. At the end of the draft environmental phase, which is expected to be about a year and a half away, it is at that point that the board will select one to be the locally preferred alternative. So how we arrived at this recommendation is first we looked at how each of the eight alignments compared to the project goals. So again, really briefly, the project goals are to provide mobility improvements, support local land use plans, minimize environmental impacts, and trade cost effective project and ensure equity. And what we found that was that in order for the goal of providing mobility improvements, options C, Alameda in an aerial configuration, Op alternative D, Alameda, um, also in an aerial configuration, concept E, serving uh, Union Station via Alameda underground, concept F, Alameda underground to Union Station, and concept G, the downtown transit core, best met that project goal. For supporting local and regional land use plans, we found that concept G, downtown transit court, best met that project goal. Minimizing environmental impacts, we found that concept E, Alameda underground to Union Station, best met the goal of minimizing environmental impacts. For delivering a cost-effective and financially feasible project, we found that the four original Northern Alignment options best met that project goal. And in order to ensure equity and meet that goal, we found that Concepts E, Alameda Underground to Union Station, Concept F, Alameda Underground to Union Station, and Concept G best met that project goal. We then also did wanted to see how each of these lines would perform. And what you see here is a matrix that summarizes the results of a customer experience and how each of the lines perform. And what I will do is just briefly highlight those that best perform and those that perform the least well in comp when we looked at different performance measurements. So starting with daily West Santa Ana branch boardings, these are total boardings. This represents anyone who is anticipated to step onto the West Santa Ana branch line. And just to note, these numbers are all projected out to 2042 as is required by the Federal Transit Administration. So we, what we found for boardings is Concept E, Alameda Underground to Union Station, came in with the highest ridership at 81,500. Concept H, Arts District 6th Street alignment, uh, came in with the lowest boardings at 46,500. Then from all those total boardings, we wanted to look at how many of those boardings would be new riders. These would be individuals that would otherwise have driven and people that we successfully got out of their cars and onto our system. Here again, we found that Concept E, Alameda Underground, brought in the most new transit trips at 27,000, and Concept H, Arts District 6th Street, came in with the lowest number of new transit trips at 19,500. Because ensuring equity is an important goal of this project, then we also looked at how many of our total boardings would be low-income riders. And what we found was that Concept G, Downtown Transit Core, would, had the highest number of low-income riders at 32,400, 
Wild Concept H, Arts District 6th Street option, would serve the fewest number of low-income writers at 19,000 writers. We then also wanted to look at the, the total travel time because this is a really important part of the customer experience. And what we found was that Concept E, Alameda to Union Station, would be the fastest ride at just over 33 minutes with Concept H, Arts District 6th Street, coming in with the longest travel time at just over 37 minutes. What I don't have up here but I will touch upon is the one seat ride. And what we found is that with these alignments on average, every West Santa Ana branch rider, or approximately 62% of West Santa Ana branch riders would enjoy a one seat ride, meaning that the 62% of all of those boardings would get to their destination without needing to transfer. In terms of total cost, we, a Concept H came in with the lowest cost at $4.5 billion, with Concepts E and G coming in at the highest cost at $5.8 billion. In addition to the technical analysis, we've also had, have had eight community meetings. We have a ninth tomorrow night. With these meetings, we've had almost 500 people attend. Over 300 individuals have viewed the webcast of these meetings, and we've received over 150 comments. We have also gone out and met with approximately 25 community organizations, stakeholder groups. We've gone to city council such as this one, met with city staff, all of which was taken into consideration when making the recommendations. In terms of next steps, our Metro Board will consider the recommendation put before them on Wednesday at the Metro Planning and Programming Committee and on Thursday at the Metro Construction Committee. The full board will then consider the recommendation next on the 24th. <coughs> this summer, we anticipate coming back out to the community with rescoping meetings. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? I don't have questions, I do have comments, but comments. I'd rather. Go right ahead, Mr. Garland. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Ray. I, um, I really want to thank, um, I want to thank Metro staff for being here today. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm correct in saying this, but I think we're the first city council that gets this presentation presented yes. in this manner. So I want to thank you mm -hmm. for being here tonight. I want to thank city manager, um, Jeff Stewart, for arranging for this as well. Okay. Um, I do want to thank um, some, some special people that are working with us on this. Scott Larson, obviously, our former mayor for from all his work that he's done on this project in the past, and he continues to do so. Thank you, Scott, for all your your uh, your efforts on this. Also, Mike Kadama, our executive director for Eco Rapid, for for all his efforts and all his work, um, and and uh, being able to 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 uh, be that glue that holds 13 different cities <laughs> together as part of Eco Rapid. Um, it's hard enough to do two cities on the same page, but to do 13, it's really um, it's really good. So, thank you, Mike, for that. Um, I wanted to share with the residents in this council that Bellflower, I want to show you that Bellflower has been really active in this process. Um, I think that those that are involved in this process will, will attest to that. We, Scott and I, um, again with the support of staff and everyone, we've been really active. We've been trying to make sure that Bellflower has a seat at the table when it comes to this project. It's, it's an important project. It's transformative. Um, and frankly, it's going uh, it's gonna to bring a lot of benefits to our residents. Um, the uh, Back in April, um, Eco Rapid and the COG took a vote mm -hmm. as part of the, the northern alignment options. So what we're discussing right now is the portion that goes into LA. Which way do we get into LA? Um, everything else is predetermined already, but um, the Gateway COG and Eco Rapid took a vote in, in April where we narrowed it down from the eight options. Uh, we narrowed it down to six, <laughs> right? Which is a big <laughs> step forward and six down. But um, I, I felt strongly and I think, um, uh, uh, Metro did as well that it was important to narrow it down even further. So we went from those six to three. And so um, we as Eco Rapid had a delegation that, uh, that met with Mayor Garcetti and that met with uh, uh, the CEO of, of, um, of Metro, Phil Washington, on May 4th in the afternoon. We had a really good meeting. I was really thankful that those two gentlemen and the whole delegation, including you ladies, were there. Um, that was able to make some really solid time to have a good discussion between Eco Rapid, 
and those entities. Um, and I thought we made a lot of good progress in terms of being on the same page of what we're all looking for, you know, focusing on the, on the commonalities of the objectives, right, rather than the differences, which has been this historical impetus in the past. Um, so it was a great meeting. Um, as part of this, we've also met with Supervisor Han, obviously, and also Mayor Garcia, who represents the COG on that Metro board. Um, and so the Eco Rapid Board, as a, medical, a matter of just historical perspective, the Eco Rapid Board um, last Wednesday uh, narrowed it down to three options of those eight. And what we did, in, it got a little heated. I thought it was a good discussion that we had. It's the democratic process, but we narrowed it down to actually the same three options that the Metro staff recommended on Friday, um, so which is E, F, and, and G. The only difference is that Eco Rapid ranked them. Instead of just saying these three, we actually ranked them and we said we, our first preference is E. And we're finding that the interests of the Southeast, along with the interests of the downtown that we've heard of where these alignments are gonna go, we really feel that E is the one that, that it's a win-win for everyone involved. I mean, it's the most expensive, and I think we'll have to find a way of being able to, f to uh, make up for that funding gap, but nonetheless, we think that it's the one that has the most benefit, so we, we strongly um, went with E. Uh, in the matter of ranking, we went with G as well, which is a departure from the historical perspective of just wanting to do Union Station. And the reason is, is the data shows that G um, is a very um, strong and sustainable option as well. And as part of the, the environmental process as we're doing this, um, it's important to have a, what they call a, legal defen a legally defensible document which means that if somebody challenges that EIR that they're, fo that they're working on right now, if somebody challenges it and all we do, all the options are going is to go to Union Station, and if somebody is successfully able to challenge that legally, we're in trouble because everything we've done for years is just to go to one, to one place, right? This, uh, going with E, which is Union Station, and going to G, which is the, the downtown core, um, gives us options in case if somebody's able to successfully challenge us from going to Union Station, we still have another option and save time in the year. So that's the reason we went with G. And then last, we went with F. Um, again, because those three are the ones that have the metrics that really sustained uh, uh, this line to make it successful. At the end of the day, we want ridership. Right? Ridership equals economic development. If we don't have people riding this line, uh, frankly, we're gonna have another green line. And I don't think we want another green line, right? We wanna have success here in our city. So it was important that we select the right one, so we selected what we felt were the right three. We're happy that Metro, at this point, that staff uh, mirrored that as well. And so we're gonna have a nice discussion on the 24th of the Metro board, Will. And you could, you could be assured that Bellflower will be at that meeting to make sure that, um, that we voice our opinion on this as well. Um, and uh, we, uh, the last thing I wanted to mention is that we absolutely oppose heavy rail. That's one of the discussions that's just coming up lately for that option H is to do heavy rail. Heavy rail would, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it would triple the cost of this project, yes. right? And uh, we barely have enough money to <laughs> do the light rail in its current iteration. Um, we think that to do heavy rail for this would just be counterproductive and just go against what our principles are. So uh, we've expressed that in, in our letter uh, as part of Eco Rapid, and I've asked the city manager um, for our next special meeting that we have next Monday, if he can add um, us mirroring Eco Rapids letter as a city to present that to Metro to have it submitted before Metro the Metro board does their discussion on the 24th. Again, I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank the residents for the trust in this process. We're not done yet. Uh, we're still in the early stages. Uh, frankly, until we get a shovel in that ground, <laughs> I'm not going to be satisfied, but I, th I think we're closer to there than we were before. So again, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank you gentlemen for the trust that you place in me and in Scott as your representatives on the Eco Rapid Board. So that completes my comments, Mr. Thank Mayor. you, Mr. Garza. Any other comments or questions? I have a, this is yes. the first council you've given this presentation to? Yes. I suggest that next time you have the handouts as you mm -hmm. go through it, because some of us old people can't read that old. <laughs> Absolutely, we'll do. So you're talking and we're trying to figure it out, but if we could follow along mm -hmm. with the handouts, that'd be great. We'll do, appreciate mm -hmm. that. Mr. Mayor, just a couple of questions. C can you show back the, the chart where you compare the cost of the different options? Yes. This one, okay. So, um, Councilman Garza mentioned about um, the Eco Rapid Board uh, voting E, 
G and F in that order, right? Correct. So in terms of the cost, um, uh, we're looking at 5.8 and then um, 5.8 and, and 5 then 5.4 in that order. So there's no difference between, uh, in terms of the cost. And in the previous chart where you, you, where you have the, uh, the benefit, there you go, okay. So in terms of comparing E, F, and G, it seems like uh, E's got the more, most of the blacks, right? Uh, yes. At the 3.5, mm -hmm. mathematical, I'm just looking at yes. mathematical. Yes, yes. So it seems like, uh, at the outset, it seems like it's the most favored route, so to speak. So of the three, I mean, uh, um, remind me again, of these three options, which ones will require transfers? Well, what we've, based on what we studied, about 60, 60 to 62% of West Santa Ana branch riders will not need a transfer. Okay, so, so all, these, all these three routes will not require transfer. Si about 62% of trips. So depending on where you ultimately want to travel to, you may need to transfer. So for example, if your goal is to get into Union Station so that you could catch Metrolink, that would be captured as a transfer. Or to travel further west to catch the red or purple line, that would be captured as a transfer. Um, what's important to note, though, is that, again, about 60, 62% of all trips would not require transfer. If the end destination is Union Station. Or within the corridor. Within the corridor, okay. Right, we found that there are over half of all trips are actually within the West Santa Ana branch corridor. So shorter trips that would not require a transfer. So again, just for clarity, among these three options, we are, which are the top options at this point, between Metro and Eco Rapid. So you're saying that the three options will not, if the end destination is Union Station, 60% of the riders will not require transfer. Or if, or if your final destination is somewhere along the corridor, let's say you're starting in Artesia and you want to get to the city of Bellflower. Not, it's not going to require transfer if you're using West Santa Ana. Similarly, if you're doing, let's say if Concept G is being considered and you're, you take the train from here, from Bellflower, and you want to get into downtown, then that would not require a transfer. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, the, other qu the other question I have here is, you mentioned earlier about um, there's some kind of support towards transit-oriented development mm -hmm. for cities. So can you tell us what kind of, what kind of support we can expect going sure. to the city of Bellflower? Sure, um, so right now where we are is developing the vision plan, which really helps define what each city wants to see around their station areas, and then also trying to develop a plan that presents a, um, kind of a cohesive <coughs> alignment. Um, what Metro is looking towards once the visioning plan is completed is trying to secure funding to take that plan to a next step and either do um, a programmatic EIR on behalf of the cities or working with the cities to be able to do that, which would be the next step. Can, can you give us some kind of types of projects that will be funded? Well, we won't know that until the visioning plan is complete. Okay. So we need to be ready for that vision yes. and plan. Yes, yes. Okay. And, and finally, I think if I recall correctly, this line was called West Santa Ana Branch mm -hmm. because Santa Ana was supposed to be the, the beginning point towards the, is, that, is, um, that, is my correction correct? I believe correct? it has some historical reference to the freight corridor. Okay, but initially Santa Ana was being kind of courted to be part of Ages this line. Ages ago. Right. Yes, and yes. So since they're not part of it, I think we should scratch the word Santa Ana. That's, my, that's really my recommendation. <laughs> Our board at some point in the future, I imagine, will consider renaming the line. And I would suggest time. make it the Bellflower line. Okay, noted. <laughs> thank you, thank noted. you so much, okay. I, I've, I've expressed that to the supervisor oh, as well. Yeah, just you know. Know. I'll make a motion for that. Right. <laughs> I'll second the motion, okay. <laughs> thank you. I've got a question. Mr. Coops. When is the Summer Olympics meant to uh, engage in LA? What, what year is that going to be? 28. So that was the goal to try to have this yes. done for the Olympics. Yes. And you can assure us that there will be no changing of trains between Artesia and Belfar. Is that what you said? Well, it depends on where you're going. <laughs> so assuming that was a joke. You're, so again, <laughs> if you're going from Artesia to Bellflower, you don't need to transfer. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. <laughs> That's all I have. <laughs> You're a funny guy. <laughs> well, you, you, 
you trying know, to stump the president. Pre <laughs> stump no, the president. Nor will we be going 300 miles an hour on a me metro. On a, uh, <laughs> won't be 300 uh, miles an hour. Oh, yeah. It won't be 300 <laughs> miles an hour. Any other comments or questions? <laughs> Just I, I want to thank Metro staff yeah. for being here today. They've always Scott been really some. responsive. So, <laughs> Mr. Mr. Larson. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor and uh, Council members. Two things. One, and it was funny, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to attend the last meeting when the decisions were made, but. Um, Eco Rapid also represents some northern cities, so I'm wondering how the uh, consideration was with, with Alternative G getting through and ultimately to the northern cities and to uh, the airport, Bob Hope Airport and that type of thing. So maybe if you could address that a little bit, how that would uh, um, be addressed. And then two, you know, the, the city really came out strong and I think we had over 700 comments um, submitted, and I think over 90% of them from the city of Bellflower wanted for the city of Bellflower some sort of grade separation. Mm -hmm. And when will that decision be made? And, and obviously the board's gonna make it, mm -hmm. but I mean, I'm here to continue to press for that, and I'm sure this community is still continuing to press hard mm -hmm. for grade separation. I know there's some talk of, you know, we've always been talking about uh, you know, up in the air, but I've heard now some discussion about maybe cut and cover, uh, which may not be too bad either, but mm -hmm. um, when can we really start pushing hard again on um, whether it's gonna be up in the air because grade level is just won't work for our community. Sure, Mr. Mayor, may I answer? Yes. So to your first question about continuing north, um, we took that into account when designing each of these alignments. So none of them preclude the option of being able to continue north should there be funding available in the future. Um, as of now, that is not that's not in the plans, that's not funded, but we didn't wanna preclude that option in the future. So we've accounted for that. Um, we did receive a number of comments from Bellflower residents um, requesting that we consider grade separating the alignment through the city. That is something that we have been looking into and we anticipate being ready to reach out to city staff this summer to sit down and have those conversations about what that would look like, what some of the potential impacts might be, um, and begin that dialogue in response to those comments. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, without any more comments, I would like to uh, tell you what a great presentation, educational, and I'm sure everybody in TV land is gonna enjoy that too because there's a lot of uh, mailers going to every residence mm -hmm. about all these little meetings. Yep. <laughs> You're doing a very good job marketing it. And uh, with that, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us here. Okay. All right, Mr. Stewart, public comments. This is the time set aside for the public to address the city council and success agency on matters not listed on the agenda. Anyone wishing to address the city council and success agency should come to the podium, be recognized by the mayor chair, and state your name for the record. If you wish to address the city council and success agency on an agenda item, you may do so by approaching the podium as we review that particular item. You'll be given a reasonable amount of time to address the city council and successor agency. Okay, anybody wishing to speak on a non-agenda item, here's your chance to come forward, state your name, and. Give us your uh, comments. First, first come, first serve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. I'm Josh Murray, and I'm here on behalf of the Clifton and Brackenseek <laughs> Library, 9945 Flower Street. I'd like to talk about our upcoming sensory story time program. Um, the next program will be on May 31st from 4 o'clock to 4.30 p.m. So join us for a sensory-filled experience for all children, but especially those with sensory challenges. Children will be able to participate in story time based on their level of comfort and comprehension. Props, music, and visual images will be used to engage and relate to each child. And this program is for children ages three and up and their caregivers. And so I invite all the members of the community with children's ages three and up and their caregivers to participate in our sensory story time program. The next one is scheduled for May 31st at 4 p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Josh, can you, I'm gonna hand these to Randy right here. <clears throat> these are some gift cards I got. 
to uh, buy books for the library at the uh, outgoing mayor ceremony. If you would take care of that for me. Thank you. I will. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, next. Hi, my name is David. Um, I come to City Bell today because I received a letter from um, city manager or building department regard regarding about um, payment for $3,100 for five something I really don't know. I have a property in the Park Street. Uh, Words have been abandoned a long time ago. So we bought it. We tried to redevelop. Bigger process, it'll take a longer. Okay. And, the, and the area very bad, so. Sir, we're gonna be talking about that item on the agenda. Is it on the consent calendar? I think that's my, my own agenda. No. Public, we're gonna have a public hearing tonight and, we, and you'll be able to weigh in at that time. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry. We'll, we'll let you know, Dave. Thank you. Next. Good evening, my name is Cheryl Williams. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council Good evening. Members. I would like to thank all of you and the Department of Economic Development and everybody for all of your efforts for Small Business Week a couple weeks ago, all the activities I participated in. I have to tell you, I really got a lot out of it. I got, met some wonderful people, got some good resources now and some contacts and I just wanted to let the city know how much it was appreciated. I know you worked hard on it. Thank you so much, Ms. Williams. Ms. Williams served on our water commission. That is right. And thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else wishing to speak on a non-agenda item? Not seeing any. We'll move on. Jeff Stewart, 11A. This is a public hearing, as mentioned before, is consideration of possible action to conduct public hearing to consider extending <laughs> urgency ordinance number 1357, which places a general moratorium on the issuance of permits for the construction, expansion, and placement of recycling facilities and collection centers within the city's jurisdiction, and adopt urgency ordinance number 1359, an urgency ordinance amending ordinance number 1357 to extend the temporary moratorium on existing permits for the construction, expansion, and placement of recycling facilities and collection centers within the city's jurisdiction. Okay, let's have the staff report. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, before you is a presentation of the proposed extension of urgency ordinance number 1357, which extends the moratorium of the issuance of permits for the construction, expansion, or placement of recycling facilities and collection centers within the city's uh, jurisdiction. On April 9th, 2018, the City Council adopted Urgency Ordinance Number 1357, which is in effect for 45 days. This moratorium, if not extended, will expire on May 24, 2018. Government Code Section 65858 allows an additional 10 months and 15 days extension, and it requires a written report from the City Council. The proposed amendment to Ordinance 1357 is included in Section 5 of the Draft Ordinance 1359. The expiration date will be amended to read March 29, 2019, 2019, and all other regulations of Ordinance 1357 will remain the same. Again, Government Code Section 658, 658 requires that 10 days before the expiration of this moratorium, the City Council must issue a written report describing the measures taken to alleviate the conditions that led to the adoption of the ordinance. In response to this requirement, the Planning Department uh, did survey neighboring cities and held a study session with the Planning Commission to consider possible code amendments, uh, such as establishing definitions, development standards, and operational standards. Staff rec staff's recommendation is for the City Council to open the public hearing, take testimonial and documentary evidence after considering the evidence, read by title only, <coughs> waive for further reading, and adopt Urgency Ordinance 1359 by at least a four-fifths vote, 
or alternatively discuss and take other actions related to this item. This concludes my presentation. We're available to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, just a clarification, um, uh, Ms. Munoz. The March 29th date, March 29, 2019, that's the absolute maximum date that we can extend this to within a 10 month, 15 day period? Um, we could request for an additional year um, upon another public hearing. Oh, we can, okay. Yeah, correct. Uh, and what do we expect to get by, uh, do you expect to complete the project by March 29, 2019? Um, the goal is to complete it before the expiration date of the 10 months and 15 days um, extension. So we're, we've already done a study session, so it's a matter of just coming up with the language and presenting that over to the Planning Commission as a code amendment and then to the City Council. So that'll occur hopefully in the next few months. So for what you have done so far, you're confident that um, we will we'll pass this before the, that, before the deadline? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Well, let's hear it. We, um, do we have anybody that's in the queue that has the potential to want to open up a recycling center that's waiting for the results of what we determine? We have not received actual applications, um, but we did receive two inquiries, but no formal um, okay. submittals or anything like that. All right, thank you. Gotcha. Anybody else? What's your pleasure, guys? I make a motion to open the public hearing. Okay. Second. Uh, with a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Sonny Santinez and a second by Councilmember Garza, the public hearing is open. Anybody wishing to come forward and speak on this item? Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay. Not seeing any. With that said, that'll be the order without objection. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, for the City Council of the City of Bellflower to adopt Ordinance 1359, an emergency ordinance amending Ordinance 1357 to extend a temporary moratorium on issuing permits for the construction, expansion, or placement of recycling facilities and collection centers within the city's jurisdiction. Second. I've got a motion on the floor by Mayor Pro Tem Sonny Santinez and a second by Councilmember Juan Garza. Call the roll. Councilmember Coops. Aye. Councilmember Schnabelecker? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Santanez? Aye. Councilmember Garza? Aye. Mayor Dunn? Aye. Okay. Uh, item 12 is ordinances and resolutions for consideration, and we have none. Uh, item 13A is a consideration item. Uh, Mr. Stewart? This is consideration of possible action to adopt a resolution number 18-25, a resolution to record a notice of special assessment for nuisance abatement at 8524 Park Street. And number two, a resolution number 18-26, a resolution to record a notice of special assessment for nuisance abatement at 9631 Artesia Boulevard. And Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Deputy City Attorney Natalie Carpellis will be giving the presentation on this. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. Let's go ahead and take her away when you're ready. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Denton and honorable members of the city council. Before you are two resolutions to record a notice of special assessment on two properties in the city, 8524 Park Street and 9631 Artesia Boulevard. In 2007, the city declared the abandoned and dilapidated residential structure at 8524 Park Street to be a public nuisance. Code enforcement staff attempted to gain voluntary compliance, and when the property owner failed to comply, the city obtained an abatement warrant from the court. Pursuant to the warrant, city staff cleaned up the debris and trash at the property. Subsequent to that, the property owner obtained a demolition permit and had the structures on the property removed. On January 11th, 2018, the city contacted the property owner regarding reimbursement for the October 2017 abatement action. To date, the property owner has neither appealed the cost of the abatement nor reimbursed the city. The commercial property located at 9631 Artesia Boulevard was being operated as an unlicensed cannabis facility. In 2017, the city successfully obtained an abatement warrant from the court and shut down the business. 
On April 12th, 2018, the city contacted the property owner regarding reimbursement for the 2017 abatement. To date, the property owner has neither appealed the cost of the abatement nor reimbursed the city. In addition to the statement of abatement costs which were issued to each property owner respectively, the city also notified the property owners of the prospective special assessments being considered at tonight's meeting and provided them with one final opportunity to pay. Neither property has done so. The attorney representing the property owner at 9631 Artesia informed staff earlier today that his client will not be present at tonight's meeting and does not object to the special assessment. At this time, staff recommends that the city council adopt the resolutions approving the assessments on both properties. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. And Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I could just tag team on Ms. Carpellis's presentation. When we took over city prosecutorial duties last year, we committed to the council to recover as many of our costs as possible. This is part of that ongoing program to recover the city's costs with regard to code enforcement. Mm -hmm. So we've been fairly successful in, in being able to recover all the attorney's fees involved along with staff time and the penalties involved with the administrative citations. This is one additional step for those properties that have not paid up uh, their fair share. Was there any offers made I mean, either either party? Ms. Carpellis can answer that particular question. By offer, do you mean settlement? Yeah, any negotiable settlement settlements or? Yes, from my understanding, um, the attorney who represents the property owner at 9631 Artesia Boulevard attempted to settle for less than the entire amount mm -hmm. and on behalf of the city, um, staff rejected that settlement offer. Okay. That was it. That was the last one. Okay. All right. Any other questions for the staff before we hear from audience? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, just a couple of questions. Yes. Um, in, in terms of the cost of recovery, and I, I, I'm really glad that we're recovering the, the direct cost, um, but how about the, um, what we call administrative cost, like the code enforcement prior to the, um, the action, uh, the billing? I mean, there's, there's, there's cost involved. And those are taxpayer dollars. Can we recover those? To the extent that those costs have been recorded, we have attempted to collect them. I believe one of the properties we were able to have all the staff and administrative costs listed, and the other one, for some reason, we don't have all the staff costs involved. Is that accurate, or was that, that the other that property? That is accurate. One of the properties, I believe, um, was also being enforced by outside counsel. And so there were administrative and legal costs um, that corresponded to those actions in addition to those that were performed by our office. So we can add that on top of what we're billing right now. My or understanding is that those costs weren't recorded. They were and not, so okay. What we so have they weren't identified mm -hmm. as, okay. So what we have are the costs once we took over this particular case mm -hmm. that are recorded and to the extent that there are uh, written records of the staff costs involved, we have added those into the, to the assessment proposal. So I would suggest that, um, Mr. City Mayor, in the future, should there be another case like this, I think we need to track down the cost. Yeah, I think uh, in the past what happened was that we had different legal counsel representing us, and I actually think they rec did recover some of those costs, but we didn't record them, okay. as we did with the current cases going forward. So. Okay. okay. Uh, second question is, um, sh should, the, uh, should these two parties, don't, if they don't pay the, uh, what, what's being assessed? Uh, what's our next step? Well, nothing so far as the city's action. What would happen then would be the county assessor. So what is being proposed is that the costs be assessed on the property as a special assessment, and that would have the same effect as, um, and collected in the same manner as property taxes. Okay. And if so, there is a default, mm -hmm. then, the, then it would be collected in the same manner mm -hmm. as a property tax default payment would be collected by the mm -hmm. county assessor's office. Okay, very good. Okay, yeah. very good, thank you. So it's a little better than a lien. That is correct. <laughs> okay. okay, good, thank you. A lot better than a lien, not a little better. Well, and, yeah. and to compare a lien versus a special mm -hmm. assessment as well, the city with a special assessment would get super priority. Right. Yeah, exactly. All right, okay. thank you. Any other questions? Sonny, answer the question I had. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, uh, David, yeah. I think you, think you wanted to talk, speak on one of these. What address are you referring to on yours? Yeah, I'm referring to 85, uh, 34 Park Street. Okay, Park. That's a long short story to short. Uh, we bought that uh, property two years, three years ago. Was, was abandoned. 
property was a halfway fire burned down. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know the condition when we bought that because somehow we get involved with the, the real estate investment thing. Then we try to keep up with the property. And the code enforcement contact us about the trash uh, laid out around the property, which is a lot of harmless people living there. We spent every week to clean it up. And you see the picture there, that you see the picture outside the dumb people around the dumb the furniture, everything there. We cannot control that, sir. Okay? And we try to spend a lot of time to clean. And finally, we got a permit. The reason why it took us so long, we talked to a lawyer, our city lawyer, I explained to them the why it took so long to our demolition because the asbestos problem with the property. When they burn down, they have, they have to have spread the special procedure approved by AQMD to remove the asbestos before it can demolish. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that we take about a month to do that. So no way we can do nothing about property until we mm -hmm. remove that and fence it out. Now even today, we the demo, we clean up the, the, the site. We put a fan, people cut the fan, dump stuff in there, dump stuff on the side street, mm -hmm. and we can every week we come in to, to clean. That burden of financial. We not live in there far, we live far away. Orange yeah, County. I was wondering, where do you live? I live in Orange County, sir. Okay. What do you think the people on that street had to go through and endure? I understand that, so mm. I, I keep so I keep every week clean, but people mm. keep dumping. Like mm. last time before we demo, the homeless people come mm -hmm. in living there, they yeah. burn the house. Yeah. We cannot control yeah. that. Well, we can't control it either. Well, then, yeah. then I We I have a neighborhood that I'm sure there's a lot of mad people I on that street. I wouldn't want to live on that help street. Me out here. I call <laughs> police, help me out here. I pay a tax, I pay public tax here. You can help me out. Because no way I can keep up every week in there. Why are planning the, mm -hmm. submit to plan the department for plan to, to rebuild the place? Mm -hmm. Takes so long. Mm -hmm. So I I I willing to pay, but I don't know what cost thirty one hundred dollars. I want to be fair share. If I make a, I be fired for what reason? If I intend to do that, or this mm -hmm. a, well, this what? what? I want to know the cost, yeah. and I don't yeah. receive it until well, I. I don't receive that, sir, until my lawyer showed me the letter on April 24th, mm -hmm. saying, hey, they, they fire you. you I don't even know. Let's yes, be Mr. Clear. The total cleanup of this thing is going to be $15,000, $16,000 like the previous mm -hmm. one was. The abatement alone would run five or $6,000. The fact that we couldn't find the other costs that mm -hmm. we lost on this, mm -hmm. he should be grateful and saying thanks, and that's as cheap as it cost him. Otherwise, it would cost him $15,000 to clean that property up rather than mm -hmm. us. So. This, this argument, mm -hmm. being that he's yeah. owned the property for well over a yeah. year before we started, yeah. it doesn't yeah. wash. But, but I, don't, I don't know what city clean up in yeah. there. I don't know because I clean, I'm the one to clean yeah. up all the time. Yeah. And I talked to uh, court enforcement, uh, Jose. See, he called all the time about mm -hmm. this. So surprisingly, why call me 3100 something for what action city took, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. pay, pay for people yeah. come to do enforcement or what? Yeah. Or, or actually to clean up. Yeah. That, that's what I want to know, okay? I want to pay if I, I if I my mistake, if I, this is a ticket I have to pay, I pay. But I want to know what, because I, I clean up all the time, every week, couple hundred dollars. We can present a detailed list no. of the cleanup that was yeah. done there and the charges mm -hmm. that we accrued. Mr. Mr. Mary, uh, Mr. Uh, yeah. Mr. Stewart, I think uh, if you can just add this in the agenda item tonight, is it, there is the breakdown of $3,100. 721 for cleanup, the, the city crew cleanup. The biggest chunk of this is city attorney, 2,320, not for the cleanup, sir. The biggest chunk of $3,100 is for our city attorney. Okay, the actual cleanup is less than $1,000. Less than because I clean up all the time. I don't ever see city people come out to clean. We the one said every week we clean that one until today. You know, that's why I want to know where it's from. All we want to do is get our public money back. You know, it's all the, the city of Bellflower's money, it's all the public's, everybody that lives here is their money. We have a lot of expenses for public safety, parks, and whatnot. We had to pay to, to uh, deal with your property, that's not fair. 
and we just want to recoup that money. It's your property, sir. No, Dan, Dan, and I got nothing to say, sir. Okay. I will just send a check for this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, any more discussion? Anybody out in the audience? You didn't even need me to make him mad. <laughs> no, he was mad all by himself. How much uh, is it that we're going to be able to recover all of it besides the third one hundred dollars? Right together. Yeah. What? How much money is it owed to the city, basically? We don't know. We don't know. All we know is we got a bill. Okay. Thank you. He could have saved money as long as he did. It would have been cheaper than having the attorney get involved. So, but. I don't know how to entertain a motion for somebody if that's where we're at. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion for City Council to adopt Resolution 18-25 and 18-26. Second. There's a motion on the floor by Mayor Pro Tem Sonny Santinez and a second by Council Member Juan Garza. Call roll, please. Council Member can I, Hoops. Can I say something before you call the roll? <clears throat> One moment for roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I just want the people at home to understand that the city of Bellflower is no longer gonna let people from outside the community buy property here and not maintain it and get away with it. We've done that for too many years. We have a great public prosecutor now. We have a new attorney and it's just not gonna happen anymore. And this poor man is one of the first ones to realize that the jaws of justice are cl slowly closing on him. So just so the people at home know what's going on, the city has changed its attitude. You know, he, he, he pretends he doesn't know anything and he doesn't know this. He lives in Seal Beach. If any of that stuff was in his front yard, the people in Seal Beach would be knocking on his door the very first day. So he thinks he can leave it in Belfar and that's okay and that's not gonna happen any longer. So I appreciate my fellow Councilman, for, for sticking to this. Thank you. Jaws of de justice, huh? That's <laughs> <laughs> How'd you like that? that? That was good. It rolled right off your tongue. <laughs> 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 Call roll, please. We have a motion and a second on the floor. <laughs> Councilmember Coops? Aye. Councilmember Schnobliger? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Santinas? Aye. Councilmember Garza? Aye. Mayor Dutton? Aye. Okay, you where are we at? 13B, Mr. Stewart. I got it. No, I moved ahead. Um, it's consideration possible I should approve ranking methods defined by Resolution 1805 and determine whether to issue the remaining medical cannabis business permits, including without limitation one dispensary MCBP at a future public hearing. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Snobliger. I looked on the list and it doesn't say I'm conflicted out, but I was, somebody whispered in my ear that said I'm conflicted out. So Who whispered in your ear? Was it somebody important? <laughs> yeah, the city administrator. Yeah. <laughs> else hey, ain't important. It would be the attorney would be important. <laughs> and Mr. Mayor? Um, if I could Mr. add, um, previously the Fair Political Practices Commission also determined that I have a conflict due to an employer-client relationship, so I'd like to recuse myself from this item as well. Okay, let the record uh, reflect that uh, Councilmember Garza and Councilmember Snobleger are uh, leaving the room for due to conflicts. And Mr. Mayor, just for the record, uh, Councilmember Schnobleger has a property interest that is involved with one of the potential applicants, which is the reason for his recusal. Oh, Okay. All right. Mr. Stewart, 13B, you want to give us a start on that? I should. I'll introduce Ms. Stover to give us the brief report on it. She is the cannabis queen. Oh, the cannabis <laughs> queen, yes. Shaw's a justice and cannabis queen. <laughs> We're, we got some one liners tonight. <laughs> I'll wait until they step out. Good Stover. evening, Honorable yeah. Mayor and members of the City Council. <laughs> this evening I'm presenting item 13B to consider a ranking method for a medical cannabis business permit for a dispensary. I would like to note that this evening there will be no permits issued. Tonight we're going over the proposed next steps as we move forward. 
Oh, can I interrupt a minute? Sure. So, I just want to let every, my colleagues know that I uh, had an uh, email today to call some gentleman back, Mr. Her Hernandez, with no topic. And I did call him back. It was regarding this, this agenda item, and I want to disclose that. And uh, he proceeded to tell me what I said in the few of the meetings to his client's liking. He seems to be a uh, uh, consultant for uh, number five. And I just wanted to disclose that. Thank you. Now you go ahead. I would like to go back to December 18th when council issued nine conditional use permits and 10 medical cannabis business permits. Of those permits, four were for dispensaries, two were for manufacturing, and two were for cultivation and two distribution. Since then, there's been a few changes. One of the dispensary licenses was surrendered by an applicant. Also, one of the um, distribution permits was not activated by the applicant. And I just want to show you that here in the approval summary. As you can see, this activated dispensary only for Caliva number three and running leaf number four surrendered their MCBP along with their CUP. So this gave us a little bit different of a total down here from the December evening. In February, Council adopted Resolution 18-05, which updated and restated the minimum qualifications for persons seeking CUPs and medical cannabis business permits. The resolution, particularly Section 9D, number 5 and 6, um, included the changes of um, how the business would eliminate blight in the city of Bellflower along with in enhancing the economic development goals in line with the city of Bellflower. Also, the resolution 18-05 removed the waiting list that was used before the December 17th meeting in which we considered applicants. And it created a transfer list with two categories in that transfer list. The first category is an applicant who obtained a CUP but not a medical cannabis business permit on the 17th, 18th evening. And those applicants may supplement their application for an MCBP with the requirements set forth in resolution 18-5, 90, five and six, looking at those sections again. And the second in that category would be an applicant who obtained a CUP, not a medical cannabis business permit, and they do not wish to sub supplement their applications. This evening, the proposed Reiki method moving forward would be to hold a public hearing on May 29th. That was two weeks from this evening. At that time, the city clerk, what's that? Oh, and one day, you're right, because the holiday, so it would be the mm -hmm. Tuesday. At that meeting, the city clerk would complete a random drawing of the applicants, uh, applicants on the transfer list um, in the first category, those that supplemented their application. That would determine the order of consideration to be used in a forced ranking method to determine the successful applicant for the dispensary medical cannabis business permit. Moving forward, I'd like to describe how the forced ranking method works. So the city clerk would assign an order from a random drawing with the applicants present in the room. Then they would be filled into these sections on the left side here. So the first one she would pull out, their name would go in applicant one, the second one would go in applicant two, and that would be the order that they're presented. Applicant one will present first. Each council member would have them number one. Then the second applicant would go ahead and present. At that time, each council member separately would determine who they rank in number order. Then the third applicant here would present and each council member separately would determine the order that they rank. And then the fourth applicant here would present, so again in order, and here we would get the final. Once all of the positions were ranked, the final column is complete and the ranking sheets will be compared by the city clerk. In other words, after each presentation that you will hear that night, you will have a number one after every presentation. And at the end, you will have 
a running number one or it will be supplanted by a new number one. So at the end, you'll have the running number one, one that's been supplanted each time, and then supplanted again at the end. But the point is to have a number one after each presentation you had on that. Secondarily, I want to reiterate that what we're looking at is a supplemental application that we're going to request the interested applicants, those who are interested in pursuing the one remaining medical dispensary, to submit a supplemental based on the changes to the code adopted in February approximately one week from tomorrow. Well, in fact, I think it will be one week. I'm sorry, two weeks from tomorrow. I think that will be the way we're going to do that. And then you'll make those, they, they will make those presentations with their supplements at the meeting, and the information that will be considered by the council is only that information in the supplemental application. Thank you. But the lottery has nothing to do with how they are being evaluated, it's simply the order in which they're being evaluated. No. Yeah, the lo that's correct. Yes. No. The lot, not the, the, lot, the lottery that the clerk Is draws. The yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, that is exactly right. It has nothing to do but the order they will make the presentation to the council. And that's just mm -hmm. to keep it honest you know, as far as that goes. Right, but there's no, no way no. to the, if the Whatever is drawn as the number one uh, proposer has nothing to do with the way we've rank ordered them in any way, shape, or form. And that's already been determined who qualifies for that lottery. Yeah, it's the four. They're correct. There are four on and the transfer list. And who are the four? Read them off. Yeah. The four that are currently on the transfer list, should they decide to, to add supplemental information to their application, would be Medical Wellness, EEL Holdings, Joint Forces LLC, and The Dab Shop. Those are the four. So if you look at the approval summary, I go back here, those are the ones that say transfer list next Ooh. to them here oh, on the right. List. Okay, trans, that's where you get the transfer, transfer list. list. Gotcha. So this one looks a little weird with joint forces because they applied for all four and only got the three. That's why it looks like that. So they are still here, three of four. And then the transfer list here, medical wellness, EEL, and then down at the bottom, dab shop. And when are they supposed to submit the supplemental information? Well, that's, that's it. So we're, Carl and I were just talking. So. What we're going to do is make the <laughs> supplemental due back to the city on the 22nd. And then they will come and make their presentations a week from that day on the 29th. So a week from tomorrow. A week from tomorrow, correct. And we're not looking for the Magna Carta here. We're looking for uh, how those products will address those specific changes in the code and brevity is right, a nice spe quality. Specifically <laughs> this 18-05, Section 9. So are you ready for me to move forward? Yeah, move forward. Yeah, I, I, now I understand that. That's that was one of my. Okay. Uh, so the recommendations between the ranking system and that. Okay. It took me a while. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're the queen. I had to talk to the city attorney a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The recommendations this evening are to approve the ranking method, to schedule a public hearing for May 29th, to consider a first category applicants. So those would be the applicants that submit their supplemental next Tuesday and direct the city manager to allow the first category applicants to supplement their application per 18-05 and authorize staff to develop and return to council with guidelines and procedures to award the remaining three non-dispensary MCBPs. So if you remember from last year, we approved 12 different types of permits. However, not all 12 were filled. And so there's three remaining that could be used for different non-dispensary use. And that's all I have this evening. Mm -hmm. If you have more questions, comments, concerns, please. Uh, I, yeah, go ahead. Can I have a question? Yes. Can you go back to the Let's ranking again, yeah, just, just, for just, for, just for clarity? This? The ranking, yeah. Uh, so since there are only three of us here to be voting, in, uh, in two weeks and one day. Uh, I'm just kind of thinking here, is, is it conceivable that, um, let's say one of the council members chose applicant A as the first, and the other two chose another applicant as number one? But in, in summary, in, but in the ranking, that number one is maybe the last in the other council members. Will there be some kind of a point system assigned mm -hmm. 
So the way that we got around that would be this last paragraph down here, or I guess explained it better, sorry, would be that if there's not a clear number one, then the council will vote again on a closed ballot. So when you say clear number one, at least two should be voting that for the for the Correct. applicant as number one. Otherwise, we go back again. Correct, on a okay. closed ballot right. system. So, so there's no point system then? No. Okay. Any other questions? And so it's cl <laughs> as clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if, if you got that kind of situation, what Sonny said, as long as someone changes their vote in, in, in a closed ballot. It's a closed ballot. <laughs> so there has to be number one, at least two. Yeah, it's like, okay. whoa. <laughs> okay, yeah. That <laughs> gets tough. Wow. My, my question is uh, transferring a, a license fee is, is, I think it's came up a couple times and it's in here. Can somebody that that was going after dispensary or, or license before that paid all their fees, can they transfer those fees to a different, like a, like a cultivation or whatever is left? Are we allow them to do that? At this point, no. We've well, not had a chance. The reason why we talked about this in great detail. The reason why we've the staff and the council have not had a chance to review those with regard to the security plan and all the other necessities of the original application that we went through. Mm -hmm. So to open up that to, and we would have to do that, when, if we're gonna fill all 12 permits, we'd have to open that round up for other folks that yeah. wanna do that. And we could do it, but we're gonna have to establish some kind of other different mm -hmm. kind of process so we can get new applications in and get them reevaluated by the planning firm and Pinkerton on the security plan and uh, the, the, the cash management plan and the other things that had been vetted previously from the original applications. Okay, because, it's, and I've been pretty vocal on this, this is the intent for the reason we've, we've worked all these long hours to get here was for revenue and to drive revenue. And that's what the bottom line is, is for us is revenue and taxing. Correct, and we gotta and move we're, on We're that. struggling with that, yeah. and I've not, I've been very vocal about it. Mm. And if you have someone that's paid, went through the process before that didn't get the luck of the draw, so to speak, and wants to do something else in one of the licenses that are left, well, everyone we can't transfer that transfer those to another one. Well, everyone that yeah. applied previously had the opportunity to apply for those other uses at that mm -hmm. time, they chose not mm -hmm. to. Okay. I guess that's so, fair. Uh, yeah, and that's yeah. what Carl, just in my ear, I was just gonna say, again, tonight is only to fill right. the remaining dispensary. Right. Gotcha, right. okay. But we did, the word transfer comes up tonight. <laughs> because of the transfer <laughs> list, and it's, it's a term it's of art. transfer. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Um, we do have, and it's the other thing that we've, we, we, we thought that we might be able to do this in one fell yeah. swoop, but it would have unnecessarily held back the final determination on the final dispensary, which is the quickest way forward for the revenues on this. Okay. That's why we we're doing this first. All right. Okay, that was pretty much my only question. Every time we... You do something, it comes, it comes up with more questions, you know, more. <laughs> in, in fact, I have more, one more question. Okay, let's hear it. In terms of the ranking, this will be by secret ballot, right? Secret. Secret. Well, we secret. Oh, secret. Well, no, I don't no, no, secret. secret. Randomly <laughs> select. Right? Ms. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the, the force ranking, the, the ranking sheets would be public and the city clerk would simply reconcile all three ranking sheets to determine whether there was a clear number one. So at least two out of three would have to rank the one applicant the first. If there is, let's say, each one of you had a different number one, then there's no clear winner from that perspective. And the proposal is for the council then to vote, put your vote into a ballot, into a hat, and have the city clerk draw out who the number one is at that point to see if, if there is then a clear number one, and continue with that process until there were at least two votes de uh, demonstrating that there was a number one applicant. So, th so this, this sheet will be published? Correct. Shown after it's, after it's balloting? Correct. Okay. And the random selection will be occur in this room correct. for all to see, correct? On the 29th. So the city manager is asking 
uh, the concept of, of the force ranking sheets, the way that it's envisioned at the moment is that each council member will have the ranking sheet. Once all of the applicants have been given a presentation, the council members will ensure that the ranking sheet is filled out completely, handed to the city clerk. The city clerk will review those ranking sheets to determine whether or not there is one applicant that has received at least two council members approval for being number one. The city clerk can then confirm that particular vote and the council will at that point vote on it and award the res or adopt the resolution okay. awarding that dispensary permit to that particular applicant. That's okay. the way it's conceived. If there is no. You're not doing the approval of the permit. Correct. Until it's final. Correct. It, the, the ranking sheet will not have your name on it. It will simply be put into the city clerk and the city clerk oh, will okay. make a determination okay. of who has number one. I see, okay. And then uh, we'll, since you call it, uh, just to, for clarification, this is a forced ranking, so we cannot put a tie. We cannot have two number ones. Correct. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, getting oh, yeah. to, it's getting clearer now. Yeah, it's getting clearer, yeah. <laughs> so that it, it was as clear well, it makes as a lot of sense. This, this <laughs> ranking sheet, I looked at it the longest in the whole staff report. <laughs> yeah. It'll seem more clear yeah, when you're doing yeah, it. Right. Yeah. Now, when, you want to chime in? Yeah, when uh, I'm already, so we, we make our selection. We now have four bona fide dispensary licensees. We have three. We're going to fill the fourth. Right. Now, could the staff tell us what is left that has not been? There are three vacancies still. All right. We had two Potential. cultivation. It, there's no there's description no. of what they have to be. Council All right. So yeah. there's. Correct, sorry, sorry, so three unassigned four unassigned, license. but we, why are not we designated what the activity is? When we initially did this, we said that there could be 12 MCBPs and we put a limit to four dispensaries and that was the only limit we put on. All right, mm -hmm. all right, so if after this process goes forward and there's still people of interest in doing business in Belfire with cannabis, Okay. Then do we reintroduce that idea of we trying to have fill those other openings? The, uh, one of the recommended actions is to direct staff to come up with a plan to deal with those remaining three permits. Now, when are we going to do that? After the 29th? Oh, yeah. Okay. After the 29th. Let's get this figured out first. Correct. Mm -hmm. But there will be a, uh, a uh, process whereby we will continue to try to see if there's action for those remaining activities. Be it cultivation, yes, distribution, but we need or to, manufacture. Again, yes, but we need to incorporate the mayor's point of view on this in that if we want to consider a, an applicant for a use that they didn't apply for originally, we've got to account for that in the selection process, and that's, that's the hiccup we have. We've got to figure that out. So we're concerned about making sure we're expeditious on getting this process in motion to create the sales tax we're looking for, correct? Exactly. The, the, the issue is, that the wrinkle is, if we are going to consider the original group of applicants for licenses they did not originally apply for, we need to create a process where they could apply for that license and compete for it. And then it, it opens up other questions uh, regarding, do you want to open this up for the public again? Do you want to keep it with that group? It's, it's, it's several policy choices the council is going to have to make. And we will, give, we will get that back to the council pretty quickly because we want to move on this as well because it is starting to get a little bit stale on this. Right. But you don't believe that we can work with what we have and make it I go forward? I don't think it's fair to the original applicants that we would award an application that they never applied for to begin with. So if somebody applied for a cultivation license and then suddenly said they want to do manufacturing, it would not be fair to the others who applied for a manufacturing license if that person were given, the cultivation person were given a manufacturing license while that, without having applied for it. So we have to create a process whereby they apply and pass. And there, there was a fair amount of things they had to do. They had to get through a security plan, a cash management plan, like I said. They had to post 28,500 in, 28, in, in application fees to do that for each permit. So if somebody came in and applied for a cultivation only, say, and then decided, oh, well, you know, you know, I think I want to be considered for manufacturing. Well, the very first hurdle is we need a payment for 28.5 for that application for the manufacturing. Then we've got to get through the process, which means I want to see the cash management plan, the security plan, and how they're going to construct that facility to meet the code, state code, 
and the local ordinances, including county fire. Of the three that are now awarded in dispensing, have any of those shown any closeness in alacrity and moving for so yes you, i'm trying to parse my words here. yeah we have uh we have right now there are two uh bby logistics is very close they've actually submitted a couple of preliminary plans and are and have had comments on them and are working on the comments to get them submitted and joint forces indicated they're going to have plans submitted next week so we're moving forward with the rest of this and we have also correct not to admit we to activate those permits because remember we gave them a June 1 deadline. We collected the prepayment of, of taxes due this year from everybody else on that list that's, that's currently waiting to submit their plans. The biggest problem I think they had and that we had, we underestimated the amount of time they needed to prepare plans and they probably underestimated the amount of work that they needed to do to prepare plans. So that's where we're at sitting on today. And just to make it, to, to make it a, short, a long story short, is there was an article, and I forgot which newspaper said over the weekend, saying this is a statewide issue. Everybody's slower than they thought they'd be. To, everybody wanted to run to the altar and get this done, but it's been a very slow process for most people getting their stores open. All right. So we may not have to have another 5 a.m. meeting, is what you're saying. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> your choice. Yeah, we're, like to do that. we're, we're here <laughs> yeah. for you. You're not doing nothing there. <laughs> Let's try 4 o'clock. <laughs> okay, you ready to hear from the audience a little bit to see how unfair we are? I'm ready. Yeah. Good evening, Good evening City Council. Right. Congratulations. Thank Mayor. you. Yes. Um, yeah, on the ones that already applied, but they didn't apply for the other ones that she was saying they didn't put up for, if they wanted cultivation and they didn't go for the other ones, uh, I just feel that they should open them back up for anybody else out there that wants to apply because you might get a lot of quality candidates. Some will be good financial backing and some will be ready to go and I think it'd make the city a lot more money that way. So. Thank you, Mr. Glenn. Hello, Council. Gene Gonzalez. Um, I was one of the ones that applied originally for the dispensary license, and now that there's one available, I wasn't eligible to make that transfer list, and I request that the city allow me to be on that transfer list because the reason I didn't get approved for a CUP was the property required a zone change and I wasn't able to get that zone change in time for the council meeting that night. Since then, I've had a property in escrow that now has 45 parking spaces and is in a very good retail zone and I have paid my fees and since the city isn't going to allow me to apply for another license, I would request that the city allow me to be on that transfer list because I've already been through the background and I think you guys know that I'm a qualified mm -hmm. candidate for the city. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I might, uh, resolution 1805 addressed specifically your situation and allowed you to come in to apply for a transfer of locations. Uh, to my knowledge, there has been no application that was filed and it would have been for a reduced amount. So that happened in February, we're now in May. I, I don't know what you're referring to at all. Uh, there's a copy of 1805 attached to the staff report, I think, right? There is, in, in 18-05, there is a relocation request that you could have submitted. Yes. Who were those copies sent to? His representatives on this process? Was he sent a copy directly? I was not sent to any copy. No, this was not sent out. When we approved it, we didn't send it to anyone. This okay. was done at a public meeting. In, in February? In February, this was done at a public meeting. And uh, um, his representatives are whom? Is your representative Mr. Cartosian? Cartosian, I, I think you believe you called him and asked him if I was interested in coming to get the dispensary we, and he said yes. And I've received nothing from him. Yeah, and he's known about this since February. I know. He was that. at that meeting. I, I highly doubt that because we would have submitted. So that's why I'm standing here today because mm -hmm. there's been no communication with myself. They have my address, they sent me all the literature saying that I wasn't qualified for a license. So I believe if there would have been a transfer list, that document should have been sent to me personally. I was the one that paid the 28000 not my representative. I spent $70,000 on this process. I, I can show you all the receipts here. But you've had your, all your consultants, the one doing the, 
legwork at the city hall, right? For the most part. Okay. <laughs> and I've worked with another one of your representatives about l locations and discussing them. Steve Macon, he's sitting here now. He's been talking, mm -hmm. had a lot of dialogue with everyone in the city, and at no time did Mr. Macon know that there mm -hmm. was a transfer list. It was approved publicly at the February 26th meeting. Mr. Mayor, if, you might, if I can interject, um, in 1805, it's, it says uh, on page three of 10, in terms of uh, persons on the transfer list will be in rank as follows. First category, applicants who obtain a CUP. Sir, you did not obtain a CUP. That's correct. Correct, okay, so you would have made it anyway. Then why are they saying I should have applied on the transfer list? No, no, no. no transfer location. <laughs> I, I think type. we're talking about semantics here. The transfer list here is basically a transfer from those four applicants now, right? Not a transfer of location. Tonight's meeting has to do with the first category of applicants that receive the CUP but did not receive a business permit. The commentator asked about moving to a different yeah. location. In February, the council considered that and created a specific category I called relocation request, and I'll simply read it into the record. Relocation request means a request filed by an applicant on the transfer list that was on the transfer list and either one was denied a permit during the hearings because of inadequate parking, or two was granted a permit and seeks to relocate the site of a cannabis business. I believe that specifically addresses the commentator's point. Now, I don't know, I, I know from experience that the interested parties have been monitoring this very closely. That's all I can say mm -hmm. on that been posted on the website since February. But I and believe the mayor was the specific person that asked for the relocation request and that's why we put that mm -hmm. in, to, in there. And I think that was very well uh, pointed out and we actually have a specific fee that was established for that which is substantially less than, than anything else. I think it's around $5,000 for the 3, relocation. 3,500 yeah. or 3,500. And the, the reason for that was specifically because of this particular issue. So it allowed the applicant to come in, file an application for a different location and be reconsidered without having to pay an, an, the entire amount again. And, and just for clarification, there will be a different process, right? It's not automatic that if the applicant applies for a relocation, it's gonna be uh, uh, granted right away. That is accurate. Well, the, okay. the, the applicant Hold would on. still have to get the CUP for right, the new exactly. location. Some of this yes. doesn't ring true because we've had mm -hmm. multiple conversations with representatives from the, the, the person speaking about a property on Park Street. That property was in and out of escrow apparently or never got into escrow and then all of a sudden we've, we magically now have a new property. I, I'm not gonna sit here and say that he was unknowledgeable. He was of course knowledgeable that we were allowing that thing or they wouldn't have been discussing this opportunity on Park Street that they were discussing. Park Street didn't materialize. Apparently we have a new property that materializes. He didn't get the application in. I'm not sure why. And I, I, what was the date to achieve the new property? And do you have an escrow? I'll show you the date right now. Last Thursday. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry. So we've had multiple conversations with your representatives since February about a Park Street address. You find a property last Thursday and you're jamming us up for lack of communication. Yeah, I'm not buying that. I'm not jamming anybody up, sir. Okay. I believe the clarity wasn't done on the city's part. Because the last time I was here, they said that they would allow the transfer of my application fee to another use. Now that has changed. So now what I believe the applicant's saying is what was discussed at a meeting perhaps is different than the ordinance that was, or the resolution the ordinance that was actually adopted after the fact. The point is though, from staff's perspective, that is the policy was what was actually adopted in February, not what was said on December 18th, not December 17th and 18th. So that part I don't know, but the notion that we've not been in communication with this candidate about different properties is just false. Okay. Now, you were here February 28th that night when we gave you the $3,500 deal? That deal wasn't set in stone that night. That was mentioned that night. There was nothing that yeah. night. And you can <laughs> so read back the record. So he was here the night that the ordinance was, was That's approved. That's correct. But there was nothing the that was 
adopted that night. Nonsense. No. That resolution no, the mayor was approved. Suggested it, and we approved it. Mm -hmm. But yes. it takes two mm -hmm. meetings to make it work, doesn't it? It's a resolution that was amended yeah. and adopted that night. But you knew that mm -hmm. night that you were going to get a deal on 3500. That's correct. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. We did know that night, and there was nothing that was adopted because, according to what you just mentioned, it takes another two meetings for that to get done. Was it all done that night? So many times we do things, we've got to have a second meeting. No, this, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this is, I'm, I'm reading straight from the staff report, which is available online and also available in hard copy. Uh, it, resolution number 1805 was adopted on February 26th, 2018, and took effect immediately. All right, so when he walked out of here that night, he had that in his pocket. He could take the $3,500 and apply it towards a new location. Th sir, that, that, that I can't, I don't know whether he had it in his pocket no, or not. Well, I, I mean, can only <laughs> represent that the resolution was adopted. Shortly after that, that resolution was adopted, there were discussions with his representatives about a property on Park Street. Because there's lots of discussion. Is that an acceptable property? We all heard it, you heard it, we heard it. And we'd indicated that yes, it is or it isn't or whatever we finally told them. And now we find out that last Thursday there's a new property in here. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, this, it's just hard for me to buy that ex the, the argument that he's making. When that was no that transfer education. due? It was adopted in February. When was it due by? Is there a due date? Any time between there and now. What? That's what I, there's no due date. So what date should we allow? Five years from now? It should be in writing. Well, okay. hey, since you didn't have it till last Thursday, it seems to me you left yourself a pretty short window. From Actually, I did because yeah, so you had the, it from the Thursday, reasons Friday, I couldn't close an Saturday, escrow Sunday, is Monday. beyond your knowledge right now. Oh, so, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just not buying this. Just like this whole process has been kind of quirky. The whole process has been quirky. Your, uh, it, everything, everything we've done has been on the website, right? Everything. everything. I've talked to some of your consultants in the past, and I say, f everything's on the website. Don't anybody look on the website. I've said that multiple times. Okay. You're, if you've got paid staff, they should do their homework and get earn their money. Well, because they, they, they call me and I just go on the website. I don't know. This is into perspective. This is an issue only because the original property he was seeking after the original property's mm -hmm. parking wasn't approved fell through, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until Thursday that he got a new property, and now he's trying to suggest that it's our fault, the city's fault, that we're not allowing him to put his application as now. Frankly, had he submitted something on Friday, we might have considered mm -hmm. it, but there was nothing submitted. We heard, what, 50 seconds ago, that last Thursday, mm -hmm. they got something done on that property? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. I think this has been pretty clear from the outset, which mm -hmm. direction we're going on this, and you've had multiple yeah. representatives talking to you about that and talking to us about it. So what, when what? When she spoke to Cartosian on Friday, did you ask him to turn in the transfer list because you spoke to him? I did not ask him to okay. turn anything. So in. that's what I'm saying. Well, if she would have mentioned there mm -hmm. has to be a transfer So if the list, resolution says that you need to sub submit something. There's no you, due date, sir. Do you believe that it's our responsibility to tell you when that thing is exactly due when you don't have a property in play? No, but I expect you so to give if us if a you deadline. Knew, if you knew we were meeting tonight, and you had a property Thursday. I didn't know Don't you think you should have been beaten feet on Friday or Monday to let us know she when not you're going to submit to something? My, she spoke to my associate personally, asked him if I wanted to transfer a dispensary. At no time did she mention there had to be a notice submitted to the city. If not, it would have been submitted, and this conversation wouldn't be had. So that's why I am talking to you guys, because she personally spoke to Cartosian, and at no time was there a mention of any transfer list or any document that needed to be submitted. That's it false. So you told him he had to submit a document. Absolutely not. I told him to look at the resolution and read it. Okay. I guess it, <laughs> that wasn't said originally. Now mm -hmm. that's being said. Well, I think it's what kind of uh, license are you going for? Manufacturing, cultivation? Dispensary. Okay. Still at that, okay. Yeah, because okay. that's the only way I'd be able to mm -hmm. get the $28,000 mm -hmm. worth that I paid okay. because anything else I would have to repay for, which was just mentioned. So you don't care about any other licenses? I, oh, I do. But okay, you do. Okay. I do. Now but we're my getting first somewhere. choice would be dispensary because if okay, not, I have to pay another 30000 okay. plus all the traffic studies, fire mm -hmm. studies, and every fee that has to be associated with this application. 
six months ago, I believe I told you to try to go ahead and get a, cult it's a light, there's a cultivation, there's a manufacturer, and why don't you just get that while you have that other property in escrow? You chose not to. Park Street fell out of escrow because the but agent no, doubled. But no, prior to that, I talked to you, and Correct. I actually and said go for it. And that was a Park Why don't you Street go address. for it? That would have fixed everything. But that was a Park Street address that right. I was referring to right. in that property. Well, we wouldn't even be here tonight if that was done, right? You wouldn't be talking about this. If I would have gotten that property, that is correct. Well, you had it in escrow. It just that fell out of escrow. Somebody the owner it up. took another offer that was non-contingent mm -hmm. while we were supposed to open mm -hmm. escrow. Mm -hmm. So I got, excuse okay, the language, okay. screwed out of that property. Mm -hmm. All right. I feel good. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Mayor, council members, I'd just like to say, make a comment on a couple things here tonight. Uh, as you, you know, I applied for this darn thing. I attempted to do my due diligence, but it doesn't look like some people do their due diligence mm -hmm. and try to blame everybody else for their stuff. So I lost, so it's time to put your head between your legs and keep on going then. Mm -hmm. So try a different avenue. I thank you very much. You're a patient man. <laughs> we have to be, we have no <laughs> choice, uh, Mayor Dunton. Uh, Mayor Dunton, good evening. Uh, Mayor, uh, Council Member Coops and Council Member Javier uh, good to see you both. Good evening, uh, staff and city attorney. Uh, thank, uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, and of course, good evening to uh, the residents of Bellflower. We all, you all work for them, right? So uh, I'm here, my name is Roger Hernandez. I'm here on behalf of applicant Derek Lee. Uh, he's, his address is situated at 17812 Bellflower Boulevard. Uh, they uh, vigorously competed uh, through the process that this city uh, put forth uh, throughout last year, and it drove into this year. Uh, this city council, uh, I think in its, in its quest for fairness and transparency, uh, developed and revenue. A, I'm sorry? And revenue, don't forget revenue. And revenue, <laughs> like many cities that are going for, uh, going, uh, that are opening the minds to allowing cannabis to be uh, involved as a new industry in their community. I believe most of them are looking for the focus of how they can augment uh, revenue generation. Mm -hmm. So you created a, a list. Uh, that list was actually uh, publicized. Uh, city staff, could you all help me, uh, please? Uh, you created the list. That list s stands there. And there was an order in which the applicants were reviewed. Uh, the, that list was a 1 through 12 order. Not all were applying for dispensary. Some were. Some weren't. Some were, provide, were asking for cultivation. Some were asking for uh, manufacturing. But ultimately, uh, there, was, there was an outcome that was driven on the order of that list. And we know that uh, when it came to the dispensary, only applicants, uh, you had applicants that if they fell within the top four, were offered the opportunity to uh, attain the operations business license here in your city. Uh, in the month of December of last year, uh, 2018, 2017, this city council made a decision about the top four and who those licenses would go to. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there was, for one of, the, of those uh, awardees, uh, notification through the court system and, in, and through the sharing of that, that, that outcome in the court system, that one of, the one of those uh, recipients, awardees, number four, uh, was deemed uh, ineligible to, to hold the license. I know that that was shared by uh, my, my client uh, through uh, his business partner and through, again, just communications with members of this council and or staff. Uh, so today, my client is, uh, again, uh, client is, is medical wellness, number five on the list that staff had been choosing, I mean, I'm sorry, that city council had been selecting from uh, just a, about two and a half months ago as there was direction being provided to uh, your city staff, your hardworking city staff. It was clearly noted that if there was a circumstance where someone who was selected in the top four uh, was not able to perform or to meet the criteria or was deemed ineligible, uh, that uh, the, the city council would prefer to look at the, the list and to draw from the list. I, I took the time to listen to audio, uh, to listen to the words verbatim 
not just to listen, but to also read them uh, after they were transcribed for me. And the directive that developed or that informed the development of Resolution 1805 was, was pretty darn clear, in my opinion. Now, this, I'm not here to, 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 to be an adversarial voice. I'm here to, uh, friendly, in a friendly way, remind council mm -hmm. of what was being directed, words of mm -hmm. guidance to mm -hmm. staff in the development of uh, Resolution 1805. Uh, as you know, uh, medical wellness met, meets the criteria within Resolution 1805. They met it when they were selected and provided a CUP, but they fell short in being the number five spot holder. They fell just short of being selected. Uh, council members, I, I don't want to embarrass any, any of, the, of the candidates that landed in the one through four, but we do know, again, that there was a forfeiture of the license. And I would ask you, and I would uh, implore you all, council, to consider this. Imagine being in that number five spot, having invested, having paid fees, being a property owner in this community, being a business owner in this community, and falling short, but respecting the order and hoping that there might be a chance that the words of this council would ring true. And those words were this. Should someone fail to perform or to operate within those top four, that we can look back to the list and then take them in order. That would suggest that number five would be next. If, in fact, the number five, five, four dispensary permit spot is now deemed uh, absent or has been forfeited. Uh, my client would respectfully uh, request that those words that were given as guidance and direction to your staff, uh, that, they be, uh, that they be adhered to. Now today, you have recommendations from your staff. They're thoughtful recommendations. They're recommendations about how to uh, develop a new method, a new ranking order, and that's just it. A new method, a new ranking order, and more importantly, it's a recommendation, Mr. Mayor and Council, they're recommendations. They're not binding on you. They're not directives to you. They're a recommendation to start the process over. In the February meeting, I heard members of the Council say they didn't want to start the process over that there was a long process. When we start the process over and over and over as public officials that you are, we protract getting down to business and opening the doors. Uh, medical wellness, property owner. The best parking accommodations that's presented to this council. Uh, they have tremendous proximity to, this freeway, to the freeway, the 91. Uh, they're on Bellflower Boulevard. They're on a retail strip that is very conducive for a medical cannabis dispensary. They're number five. I know that some folks in the community here, leadership on this council, may have been aware before the start of this year that there may have been issues with the applicant that forfeited uh, the, 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 the operating or business permit. Uh, so I really want to urge you to, to Consider the fact that there, were, there was a line that folks respected, an order that folks have been uh, waiting, and, and not challenging, but respecting. When the selection of the four was made, that process was respected. There wasn't any lawsuits that came as a result that I'm aware of as it related to this rank order. It was respected. Uh, today, you could make a decision to alter the process and start a new process, a new uh, ranking order process. You can give direction that today. Or I would urge you to please uh, acknowledge and, and, and continue to support the process that you as a council led the way in, in developing this ranking order here. Uh, none of the other dispensary permit holders as of last week, and I want to speak very clearly, as of last week, have opened yet. Have opened yet. So this, the process, it's still jiggling in the, in the refrigerator. It hasn't solidified. The conversations about not restarting this ranking methodology was about two and a half months ago when direction was given about how the resolution ought to look and how it ought to read. Uh, I know your staff works hard, and I don't want this to be, I'm not suggesting that you uh, dismiss their, their, their valuable ideas. I know that they're, they're doing what good public administrators ought to be doing, provide options for you. <laughs> and you have options for you tonight. You can say tonight, 
Folks paid their fees. Folks respected this line. If number five is ready to go, and those, and if, if, if number five isn't ready to go, then go to the next one. But if number five is ready to go, then it, out of fairness for the process that this council said would be the process, uh, when at the time of selection, which was in December of last year, just a few months ago, then I would implore you to please uh, stand by that process, given that no dispensaries have opened yet, given that there was some knowledge that there was issues with one of the licensee operators or dispensaries, and there is now a formal action that's been taking place in the forfeiture. Number five is ready. They're ready to go. They've been committed to the city, given the fact that they bought a business here that was failing in 2002. They've been working really hard to keep it open. They've, as you know, they've, for, for more than a decade, they kept a, a, a business that was failing. They picked it up as a failing business. They kept it afloat and kept it going for well more than a decade, uh, closer to 15 years. Uh, now that's, that says something about their commitment to Bellflower. They're still committed to Bellflower. They're a proper donor here. They want to continue doing business here. They've gone through this process and we respectfully request that, uh, that you opt to stay with the, the, the process and the ranking order that has, again, very recently been arrived at, very recently. Again, you have an alternative here today to restart, and, but is that the fairest to the people that, have, that accepted this, that went through that process and, and uh, meet the criteria today? Uh, I, I stand here uh, humbly asking for you to not go with staff recommendation tonight. It's not a knock on staff. It's more so about awarding the people that, again, paid the fees, have proven their loyalty to this community, have proven that they met all criteria. Your staff has already determined that they met criteria. They provided them a CUP. They've already determined that criteria has been met. Uh, I've, as some of you may know, I've been in that place. I've been in your chair. And I, there have been times where I went with staff recommendation, and there was times where in my heart mm -hmm. I felt. Now that you brought it up, I was going to ask you. You were a councilman of West Covina? I was a councilman and mayor of West Covina. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and, for eight uh, years. How many years? Eight years. Eight years. 2003. So then you would know that you ever, you ever passed a resolution that, hey, you could probably could have done a better job or you kind of, you know, got a little uh, hindsight and kind of say, well, we need to bring this back and maybe look at it again. That does happen from time mm -hmm. to time. There's no yeah. doubt about that, sir. Maybe that's what's happening now. Maybe it's not. Yeah. yeah okay. Maybe it's not too. Yeah. It's, I'm just saying. With all you, due respect, you, but maybe yeah, it's not. You're all, yeah. You're, you know, you're, you're, I, I understand you work for a client or whatever, but anyway, I know you know as well as anybody because you've lived, you've, you know, like you've been on the dais before, and yes, you know when you, you pass resolutions and sometimes uh, the wording and something isn't right, and you have to bring it back. Sir, I will tell you, I, in my time in office, I had people, I had staff recommend that I uh, sell a park when there were 300 people in the audience saying, mm -hmm. don't you dare do that. Right. I went with the people in the audience. Mm -hmm. I didn't go with staff recommendation. I had staff recommendations uh, recommending that I sell a portion of a civic center mm -hmm. before there was ever the proper channels of process through the planning process. Mm -hmm. And I don't say this to be argumentative. I'm saying I didn't support that process. And uh, an independent state auditor found that process much years after I left the council to have been an improper process. So there are times where mm -hmm. uh, sometimes as elected officials, I know that you have to mm -hmm. weigh all facts. Nobody's perfect. And nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. You're correct. But uh, I want to appeal uh, to what you lived through for mm -hmm. a good number of months. And this list here uh, says a lot about the hard work that you all developed. And you all know that the, the folks that committed to the process uh, have gone through a lot, uh, that they've spent their hard-earned resources in hopes that they can arrive in a good place on that list. Uh, that list took a lot of taxpayer money to to develop this list of your own staff time, your own city's resources. Uh, I won't burden you with any more time. I've taken a lot of time. I will just ask that it you- It shouldn't have took any taxpayer money because we've structured it that way, recover costs. And that's a smart mm -hmm. thing. And that's All a, about and revenue. Uh, and that's a smart, that's a smart approach, yeah. Mayor Dunn. Mm -hmm. I, I, but I, I, would, uh, I would urge you to consider that the mm -hmm. option that's being provided tonight is not your only option. Mm -hmm. you, you do have other options as a council, and uh, we hope that you will consider you know, all the facts uh, as presented 
not just by by your staff, but by myself here tonight. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, we know that uh, since beyond last fall, going backwards, folks were well aware of, of what the process would look like here. And it was said from this dais, it was said, it was said from this dais, should someone falter from that top four, uh, that there was a sentiment expressed mm -hmm. that people would like to, um, from the council, that there would be a desire to look, go back to the list. Mm -hmm. This was a list I, I believe was being, that was being referred to, mm -hmm. given that there, I don't know of any other list. Uh, with that, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hernandez. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, if I yes. could address just some of the speaker's comments. Uh, first of all, the underlying assumption in the speaker's comments, in my view, is that somehow, based upon your ranking on, on this list, one was entitled to obtain a medical cannabis uh, operations permit. That is not accurate. That ranking and the, lit and the methodology by which that ranking came about was done at random for, well, it was done electronically. So it was first come, first serve. That was performed last year and was done electronically. So whoever got the ranking first and had their application in, that was the basis for the ranking. The resolution that was in, in effect at that particular point was 17-65. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Exhibit A of that resolution, it, it clearly states in several sections that the council has full discretion to approve or deny any application the uh, complete application needs to be submitted in order to be considered for approval. Submittal of a complete application does not guarantee approval. These are discretionary permits. The city council has full discretion to approve or deny any application. Simply because some of the applicants may or may not have gotten permits that were one through four does not guarantee that number five obtains a operations permit. It simply means that they are in the hopper for consideration of a dispensary permit, which is what the council dis talked about in February when it adopted 1805 and acknowledged that those applicants that had paid their $28,500 for the permit application shouldn't have to reapply for their application in the event that somebody dropped out ahead of them and they were in the running for a dispensary permit. The only question tonight is, now that there's one dispensary permit available, and just to set the record straight, that wasn't forfeited, it wasn't revoked, it was surrendered by the applicant. Now the reasons surrounding that applicant are public, they're in set forth in a settlement agreement, uh, which is a surrender agreement of both the CUP and the operations permit. So it wasn't forfeited or anything like that. I want to make that clear. But for purposes of tonight's decision, the real decision for the council is how do you deal with that available dispensary permit? The proposition set forth by staff is what we believe is something that's open and transparent and fair. It goes along with the council's original idea that this shouldn't be done as a lottery process or a points process. It should be done, in essence, completely at the discretion of the city council based upon presentations made by the applicants, which was the reason for the original electronic methodology of first come, first serve. Now, if the council, for example, wanted to not use the methodology of the clerk picking out names out of a hat and instead <coughs> use the ranking from this list, it certainly could start with number five, to use that as the first application being considered. But simply because they're giving a presentation and asking for a dispensary permit does not require the city to actually issue the dispensary permit to that particular applicant. That is the reason for the forced ranking methodology that's being proposed, which is based upon the presentations of all of the applicants that have already submitted their permit fee and have obtained a CUP, the council can make a determination at that point who should qualify for the dip dispensary permit. I'm happy to answer any questions. If there's any questions to Carl. Anybody else in the audience want to speak? Uh, good evening, Mayor, Hi. Council, and City staff. Uh, my name is Nadia Simon. Okay. I am the other associate that's been helping Mr. Gonzalez of Calumet. Um, the last time I came in here physically was a little over three weeks ago, and I wanted to clarify a zoning issue. And at the time, we actually, I, I was speaking to Randy and someone else at the counter, we pulled up this list. And uh, the question was, first and foremost, whether Mr. Gonzalez could uh, have a cultivation or manufacturing um, license on a CG zone as opposed to an M1 zone. So start off with that. 
I was then told that he could only apply, reapply for a dispensary, but then during conversations after that, when I did inquire about potentially other licenses, again, I was never made aware of a transfer list. And um, as it... So as it pertains to that, I actually found uh, in writing what Mr. Kartosian had mentioned at a meeting and I believe had emailed to everybody here. Um, as it pertains to Resolution 1805, since Mr. Eugenio Gonzalez was technically denied both a CUP and an MCBP, this resolution does not provide a pathway for him to resubmit a CUP application at a new subject property while keeping his place on a wait list or transfer list. This seems unreasonable in his case. Mr. Gonzalez's circumstances were quite unique due to the fact that he was very clear in inquiring about his subject property well in advance of the application deadline, yet receiving a nebulous response from his consultant. Ultimately, he was denied his CUP and MCBP and forfeited his application fee of 27500 It would be prudent for a majority of council members to agree with the inclusion of the following language for Resolution 1805 at tonight's City Council meeting. The City Council may also consider the resubmission of a CUP by an applicant considered to be qualified and who also had a previous application that was deemed complete. In this case, Mr. Eugenio Gonzalez would reapply for a cannabis cultivation and or dispensary license at another property in Bellflower and would keep his previous place in the queue. Uh, I don't believe this was ever um, acknowledged or I don't even think he got a response for it specifically. So in any case, it was brought up. There was no clear cl clarification. And um, during all the back and forth I've had, this never came up. Uh, so I'm not quite sure where that leaves us. Who did Kurt send the uh, email to? Uh, I'm not quite sure who you sent the email to, no, but he also some, mentioned it's it. It's got to have an email meeting. address on there to win. You just read an email. Uh, this is a, a note that he sent us. A oh, draft. it's a note he sent in house. It wasn't an email no, to the no. staff. No, no. He sent us this draft to okay. let us know this is what I will be sending out to council. So, so he yeah, also okay. mentioned this at the city council meeting on February 12th. So, okay. So you guys were privy to a problem. Probably. That's what it sounds like. That, that he was concerned. There was concerns from Kurt, Kurt right? And right. that's what he, to you guys. Well, again, I don't see why that was never addressed then. If there was a concern, we would have been in the loop if this was mentioned. So we still never actually got a response on it or any sort of inclusion with potential language that would clarify that. All we were told was, look at the resolution. When you're not quite sure what exactly to look at or how to proceed with a new property, how are you supposed to resubmit? Yeah. yeah. So Kurt wrote policy that he wanted the city to adhere to, and we never even saw it. <laughs> uh, he mentioned it at the meeting. Thank you. Well, when does Kurt Cartosi decide what it is that we're going to have as our policy? I don't think that was the uh, point well, of the message. That's what you read there. He gave the suggestions. He gave a whole outline as to how it should be done. A suggestion we never for received clarity. It, and now you're asking why we didn't respond to it when we never even saw it. Well, <laughs> process was prior to today. And you've talked to him, right? Quite frankly. How many times have you talked to Kurt? Oh, 10 times. Okay. You that's know. what I thought. And honestly, I mean, with the discussion tonight that they found a property on Thursday. Uh, well, they which found it earlier. And it's, I think it's in, in es escrow on Thursday is what happened, I oh, believe. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, everybody was quite knowledgeable about what 1805 says. Mm -hmm. And there was no application made, but there could not be an application made because the requirement, if you'll remember, was a long-term lease or an escrow on the property. So as there was no lease entered into on the property and no escrow open, so we are, I guess, culpable because our council meeting happened to fall too close to the day they opened escrow on the property. And somehow, because of that, we're accused of not setting a deadline for the, the application or the submittal for a request of transfer. Well, I mean, frankly, I don't think I need to apologize too much for that. I think that if I did come in a few times and I did call to clarify, 
that it would come up during the conversation, would it not? I mean, if I, if I specifically, explicitly asked that the Hold client the would like to. The facts are that there was no ability to request a transfer when you did not have a property under lease or in escrow. There is no property in escrow or under lease until last Thursday, apparently. And the meeting was Monday, so you didn't have a chance, apparently, to make a request for transfer between Thursday and Monday. That I understand. But it's, it's not the city's fault or the city council's fault, nor is it an error in any way, shape, or form that this process is moving forward before you could get your property ducks in a row and get your request for transfer in. Oh, okay. No. I do think that's beside the point since I That is exactly asked, the point. I asked multiple times about how to proceed by to apply for a different license. I don't see how that was never brought up, that the, we would actually have to be on a transfer license list. The different license is a whole right. different so game. So that's the issue. So if we were number nine on, on the list. Hold on. And we, as we explained mm -hmm. before, the different license you applied for, a dispensary permit only, as I recall. Correct. And we're number mm -hmm. nine on that list. So now you're saying you want to apply for a cultivation or a manufacturing or a distribution license it is one of the th other three options available. You never applied for that license to begin with. We don't have a process to consider that. And there are other people that are sitting there that have already paid the permit fees and applied for that license, which you have never applied for. So I, we don't even have a process to even think about or accept that. We've been very clear on that. We still have to develop a process to accept an application for additional licenses. And we don't have that done yet. So there's and a clear contradiction entitled, between a transfer in, list You were and never a new on the queue for a license other than dispensary based on your original application, ever. Mm -hmm. And there's never been any indication that you were in that queue. Mm -hmm. So until we develop a process by which somebody that's been on the list can apply and we go through another review process, we have another security review, another cash management review, and all the other things that went through the original process, which are quite detailed, can we even entertain that kind of a license? So the transfer list would have been inapplicable to us The transfer regardless? list applied yep, only no to folks who were applied for a dispensary and want to get in the queue for the next dispensary license available. That is it. That's the limitation of the transfer list. There is no cross-pollination, if you will, between a dispensary license, a distribution, cultivation, or manufacturing license. Thank you. I really wish someone would have clarified that sooner. Yeah, I did. We have been many, very many, clear on that from the outset. Many months I ago, know, yeah. I told Mr. Gonzalez he should get the manufacturing and cultivation, and he didn't. Uh, that was what on Park Street note. was about, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You were there. <laughs> no, he, he never wanted distribution. No, <laughs> yeah. uh, he well, wanted I, dis I he wanted a secondary a, question. He put all his eggs in one basket for, dis dis you know, for dispensary. That's, that's it. So another question is, if, we, if you do want to get a cultivation or a manufacturing license, can you do that in a CG1 zone or does it have to be an M1 zone? I've never gotten clarification on this. Well, I don't think we've developed those guidelines yet, so I can't even answer the question. When so we how does someone move on a will. property if they don't even know whether it's yeah. not the right? He, he'd essentially go through this all over again. Correct. If he's switching uses, yes. And he has to pay another application fee of $28,500 to do that. And that's if the council opens it to people outside the initial list here. Okay. Now, they very well could. I mean, that's really a policy mm -hmm. call of the council. They want to include the number nine in the dispensary and allow him to pay the fees and reapply. But to date, we have no direction to allow that. And I think the confusion has to do with the relocation request and the transfer list. The relocation, if you read it verbatim, means a request filed by an applicant on the transfer list that was on the transfer list and denied a permit during a hearing because of inadequate parking. I think Mr. Sanon has hit it on the head. This is semantics. And maybe the transfer list may not have been the best term to, this, to, to talk about what we're doing tonight. But we never have, it, never have had, and we've been very clear in never having had had a process to allow a non-applicant to become an applicant with a, without a review process. We just don't have that. And it wouldn't be fair and it wouldn't be equitable to anybody if we didn't have that. So I'm not saying that he, he would not make a fine candidate for another license. He just has not applied for that license yet. It's really as simple as that. Okay. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council <laughs> Members. This is a uh, thank you, staff. This is a. Uh, What's is your a, name? Win Lu. Win Lu. Operator for Belfar Medical Wellness. This has okay. been a. Uh, I I have a newfound respect for what you guys do. It is it is something that is very difficult, and not many people are capable of what you guys do. Mm -hmm. So I, I I thank you for your efforts. It's a it's been a a long journey. I've been coming to these meetings for a while. Sorry, I missed the last one. I know it was your inauguration. I had a flat tire. Inauguration. That's right. <laughs> inauguration, yeah. yeah your, uh, your ceremony. So I had my uh, red tie on, too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I had a flat tire. Um, Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> but I've been coming to these meetings uh, pretty frequently, and, and this, this mm -hmm. word list has been referenced many times. Mm -hmm. And it was my understanding that, mm -hmm. that, that because of the December 18th meeting that, that you guys would go down this list and evaluate each application on, for their merit. Um, if you guys want to do something else, I, I totally respect it. Uh, we've been patiently waiting uh, for our turn. Uh, we feel like we have the best location. Uh, we have 22 parking who spaces. Who are you? I don't even know who you are. Wayne Liu, Belfire Medical Wellness, right, number five. Have, uh, number five. Yeah, number five, yes. Yeah. Didn't you just have somebody up here talking yes, about yes, number yes, five? Yes, yes, yes. That's our representative. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we, have, we have. He's a closer. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm very humble. Are you the humble. guy that was going to teach us about cannabis? Uh, yes, that was oh, me. That's yes. The guy. Okay. yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, I, I, you know, I, we have. I believe the best location. It is it is prime real estate, uh, great for attracting business. Uh, my experience with with cannabis businesses, I've been responsible for operating two pre ICO dispensaries in the city of Los Angeles. Before that, I owned and operated uh, women's apparel. Uh, we had six stores and an online store. Our best year was $18 million of gross revenue. And I feel like I am more than capable of operating a, a, a mar medical marijuana dispensary. Uh, I have known Mr. Lee for 15 years. We are our family friends. I am friends with his, 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 uh, his children. And we were he was notified that his property qualified for a, a, a marijuana dispensary license. And at that point was when I was uh, brought in to, to help develop this. He has been, as, as Roger stated, that he's been operating a, a basically failing business for many years. And, you know, they finally had to close the, the, the meetings because they're losing $10,000 a month. And, and what was worse was not really the money lost, but the damage to his reputation. What's with the construction fence around it? What's it's that? not a construction fence. It's well, more to it? keep people out. I see. Yeah, keep people out. And we want to... We want to you know, it's great location. We want to make it something that you guys can be proud of. And I would love the opportunity to, to prove to you that I can be a good neighbor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think you know who I am, Scott Larson. Mr. Larson. And with the Metrolink. With the Metrolink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I think in answer to one of Dan's questions earlier about existing uh, distributors and whether they're looking for something else, I, I, I can answer that with the one that I talk to on occasion, which is number one medicine woman um, who has a dispensary and manufacturing, has found out that it comes a shock to everybody that they can't distribute the product that they manufacture. So to me, a distribution license was for, you know, okay, I'm going to get manufacturer A and manufacturer B and manufacturer C and get all their stuff and warehouse it and send it out to all these dispensaries. But to me, as an accountant, it seemed logical that if you can manufacture something, you should be able to distribute it to your customers. But the state, in its infinite wisdom, has decided that that's not necessarily the case. And so they have interest in... Um, going through whatever process is developed, but ultimately they would like to get a distribution license, if for nothing else, just for the stuff they're manufacturing, is what they've been telling me. Um, but right now they can't distribute what they would manufacture without a distribution license. So when that process is developed, mm -hmm. and if it's the pleasure of the council, and they go through the process, and they pay all the additional fees, and Whatever else you're expecting, if it's the pleasure of the council, I'm pretty sure they would like to snag one of those distribution licenses so that they can at least distribute their own products. So, so the state isn't making it, the state's making you get a local distribution license. Yes. 
So you don't have to have a state distribution license. Well, yeah. Oh, you so do. It's, we got to mirror. The local level has to mirror the state. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so once they open, the only thing they can do is they can only dispense why th what they manufacture. That's all. Oh no, they can they can buy from a distributor. No, but they cannot dis they uh, cannot distribute though. But what they manufacture, yeah. they can't, and they they can they can distribute in their own dispensary what they manufacture. Right. But they can't send it out to other That's dispensaries. What I'm saying. They can only dispense what they <laughs> and manufacture. And distribute. <laughs> Not distribute. Yeah. They can yeah. only dispense. Yes. Yeah, so That's all. So. Jeez. It's all part of the process, and if it works out, great. Uh, yeah. But in answer to your question, now yeah. Caliva abandoned that, didn't they? Yeah. Anyway, right. I don't yeah. need to take up your time because it isn't really what. But thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for the heads up. We should call this cannabis agenda an educational agenda. <laughs> oh, not seeing anybody. What's your pleasure, guys? J just uh, prospectively, Mr. Stewart, um, what will be the process to relocate a, uh, an application, a location for, let's say, someone, let's take number nine. Didn't apply for a permit originally, wants to apply no, for a they permit? No, they want to, they applied for a dispensary. Correct. They didn't, they didn't get a CUP, and they want to relocate. That would be uh, up to the council. So, I so mean, we don't have a process. We don't have yet. a process in place. We, we, we thought we might get a request to relocate. We never did get that request. Frankly, we, we thought we'd get it a while back and didn't get it because we're under the opinion that they had a property lined up and we heard from multiple sources they were going to do a relocation request. Then I would have brought that back to the council and see how they want to handle that. Okay. Included in or outside of what Ms. Stover has referred to as the transfer mm. list. As but opposed to, to being outside of it, we could have. We have yeah. the wait list. Yeah. Wait list. Yeah. I think that's right. better. Right. But the transfer list. Yeah. yeah. But to relocate, you have to have an approved parcel and have to relocate to another approved parcel. Correct. And most likely you're going to go through a CUP process. Yeah. That we is a CUP. Start, they no, they would have to go through this. another CUP process because right. mm -hmm. they were not granted a CUP yeah, right. the yeah. first time. Right. Exactly. And then we're going to have to look at how far they are from a church or from a school. Right. Exactly. Or another right. It still business. has to be a qualified location. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think yeah. that's been the hiccup all along, is that's been not an easy place to find. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should okay. Everybody want to make a motion? Everybody's yeah. tired. I think everybody's that. tired. Well, it's way early. Yeah, it's only 9.30. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Do we got any Bellflower High students out there left? No? No, they went home to study. There's in the green room? <laughs> if you're still up there in the green room, green room Bellflower High, you're getting an education tonight. There's Maybe. plenty of seats here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Close the hearing. Okay. Okay. Okay, what's your pleasure? What do you guys want to do with 13B? I'm going to make a motion to uh, approve a ranking method as defined by resolution 1805 and determine whether the issue of the Rainy Medical cannabis business permits, including without limitation, one dispensary MCP at a future public hearing, which I guess we're going to designate as May 29, is that what we said? Correct. Do you want, the date, you want the date in the motion, just in case? It probably should be appropriate. Can we or the date, the date uncertain? I, I think what we want, no, I'm, I would just make the motion to adopt the staff's recommendation. All right, we're adopting the rest recommendation for yeah. the uh, okay. remaining. Excuse me, Mayor. I would just like to add that you also wanted them applicants to, s to submit their supplemental application by next Tuesday. Well, we can do that with, uh, okay. As an information member of the council, we will send an email out tomorrow saying we want the supplemental applications, which included the issues listed in 1805, to so be submitted by That's the part of the staff recommendation. Correct. Anyway, right. I will second the motion. And I have a question just for clarity. We only have one more MCBP to be issued, right? For a dispensary. For dispensary. dispensary. For dispensary. dispensary. There's Correct. three well, others in addition to the dispensary. But three. there's no applications right now. Not for those other uses. That's no. what I'm saying. So okay, how can we issue MCBP? No, 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 no. no. Okay. Yeah, one, one medical license. I'm asking about MCBPs. No, there there's only one, one dispensary are, permits that we there can are no issue. Addition, you say After ad that, there's no more at this point. Correct? Correct. I'm just, I'm just clarifying that issue. The 
there are no other applicants that have sought a cultivation manufacturing or distribution license in the current pending batch that have already filed applications and paid their permit fee. All the remaining ones on the list, the original list from December, all were seeking a dispensary permit. Okay. So the next question that the council will need to tackle is, what do you do with the last three permits that are available? That's where I'm getting to. That's what I'm getting to. I'm just right. kind of prepping my, my, yes. my question we to make sure that I'm asking the right question. We haven't really thought much okay. about that yet. Okay, I mean, so, so, I'm, gotta, so I'm getting yeah, there. So yeah. we expect, we'll be expecting staff to make recommendations in terms of how do we deal with the remaining three MCBPs other than this pencil. Correct, and we will, we will get something to the council very All soon right. on that. That's clear. Hearing. All right, so that's what, good. So we're on the same page. Question, what if one of those uh, people on the list here came in and says, I want to get one of those open permits. Here's my stuff. Here's all my, here's my checks. Here's my uh, security plan. Here's this, my location. Well, I mean, they could, they could say they have it, but the council's I'm not identified that yeah. process. So yeah. we, what I, we have to come back to the council. The council has to prove a process by which they could do that, and then they could do that. We haven't done that yeah. yet. But then we you, don't do the same, you don't do the same process we did before? You could do that if you want. I but mean, I would think that we've already went through a process with every one of these on this list. Yeah, but there might be a whole bunch They're of the applicants that say, oh, yeah. hey, I want in, yeah. and we're not excluding exactly. them. So. But we have somebody, you know, kind of in the queue already, I'm thinking. Well, and yeah. that's fine, but I, I don't know whether or not we well, could just well, make that exclusive. If you're saying you want us to develop a process that exhausts the folks that may be in the queue and do that first, and then develop a, sub yeah. a secondary one afterwards, we could do that too. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just thinking outside yeah, the box I mean, here. I don't know. Yeah. I, I will leave it up to you for staff I mean, to make recommendation. No, to me, it's okay. about revenue, and the quicker right. we can get the revenue license, licenses on some I you agree. Know, people, I, I, I can do it. Yeah, that that's that's a, and it would be faster if you know they can say yes or no and move on. Ex yeah, well, I don't except know. that it's the application is not the same. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you've mm -hmm. applied for dispensary, you've yeah. not applied for right, a right, cultivation right. permit. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. A, yeah. We'd have to have them resubmit anyway. A full application. A full, a full application. application. Well, a lot of it you can just take from their oh, I don't think so. previous I think one. I think they're different. Or the number security plan or something like that. Uh, I, I think they're locations different. Locations the same. I think they're different. Yeah. If you look at the cultivation needs, they're very different than the dispensary. Different, right, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, cultivation wood and manufacturing wood, too. Let's just worry about getting the final on this. <laughs> 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 I'll try to get it all done in one meeting. <laughs> well, that's fine, but I think we need to concentrate on getting the dispensary okay. squared away, right. and then we'll move off. We got, I, a, I okay. we got, a, we got a motion. We got a motion, got a motion on the floor by <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Coops and a second by <laughs> Santa Inez. And, and uh, call roll, please. Councilmember Coops. Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Santa Inez. Aye. Mayor Dutton. Aye. So now, Mr. Mayor, I'd like okay. to uh, direct, ask staff to come up with recommendation in the future uh, meetings to come up with a, um, a process yeah. to give out all these the, the remaining permits and also to accept applications from n for new permits. We won't get it done. No, no, not, no, I'm just I'm just asking staff to come up with recommendation. We'll get it to you in June. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're gonna need our council colleagues back. Yeah. yeah. Whoever's left. We send them home? Well, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me correct that. We have a six month review of all the CUPs in June. Yeah. <laughs> You're good. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Item 14 is a consent calendar. Does anybody have any uh, items they want to pull or recuse themselves? No. I'll move the consent calendar. We got, second. We got a motion and a second on the consent calendar by uh, Coops and Santa Inez. Uh, without objection, that'll be the order. Okay. Council reports, uh, Mr. Coops. All right, so uh, I'm going to uh, adjourn this meeting with uh, your approval in remembrance of Paul Lawrence Helzer, Dr. Helzer. 
Uh, he's, uh, we're gonna adjourn the meeting in memory of former Belfar Unified School District Board Member and City of Belfar business owner, chiropractor, Dr. Paul Helzer. Paul, also known as Captain Bone Crusher, in the words of his daughter, was born March 21st, 1952, passed away on Wednesday, April 25th, 2018, at the age of 66. He was a member of the Belfar Unified School District Board for 16 years until he retired in July of last year. Paul was a fantastic chiropractor who helped many people with live their by lives better. He graduated from the Palmer College of Chiropractic. Paul lived in Belfar for over 50 years with his wife Beverly and their four daughters. He attended Belfar Unified Schools as did his children and grandchildren. He often spoke of his love for his wife, his family, and for his community. Memorial services will be held on Sunday, May 27, 2018 at Hillcrest Memorial Park and Mortuary in Bakersfield. The family is setting up a memorial donation to support Shriners Children's Hospital and request donations in lieu of flowers. Our deepest sympathies and heartfelt condolences go out to the entire Helzer family. The Helzer family is a mainstay in Belfar. His father, of course, longtime chiropractor on uh, Flower Street, and uh, Paul developed the same career in the path of the father and then continued with that for another 30 years beyond that. He had uh, designs on being on city council. I only know that because when Dorothy King uh, decided not to run again for council, then I pulled papers to run and so did Paul. And I was really concerned that how could I win against a guy like Paul Helzer, a doctor, and also someone who had been in the community with his father's name and had a lot of name recognition. But uh, anyway, he stayed on the, on the uh, school board and I was elected here and the rest is history. But uh, Paul was just a really neat guy. Paul was, uh, if you go online and go to Paul Helzer on Facebook, you'll see pictures of him dressed up as a pirate. Mm -hmm. He didn't take himself too serious. He was just a, a good old egg. And uh, I think the board misses him already. I know the school district superintendent does, and uh, <laughs> since he's no longer with the organization. But anyway, mm -hmm. beyond that, I just wanna wish uh, condolences to the uh, Helzer family. And uh, he moved his family and uh, to Bakersfield here about oh, six months ago, and that's where he passed away, and that's where his uh, will be interned. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Coops. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Santa Ines. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to, <coughs> again, belated ha happy Mother's Day to all the moms, and I hope that you had a wonderful celebration yesterday. Uh, and just one more thing, on May 7th, together with our mayor and council member Garza, we attended the uh, event um, sponsored by the Sorotomist Club of Belfar. I just want to appreciate, um, show my appreciation to the Sorotomist Club uh, for what they do um, for women uh, with their scholarship, with all their grants, and they really help uh, the women. And uh, congratulations to our city clerk and our deputy city clerk uh, for being members of the Sorotomist Club. So thank you. Council Member Garza. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll try to make this quick. Uh, first, I want to commend staff for the Small Business Week that they, uh, that they hold on the week of April 30th. Um, I know that um, Council Member Coops and I came to uh, the kickoff event here. That, that was a lot of fun, and I wanted to thank the Council Member. Um, you always make every event fun, and I think those of us <laughs> that are here that were there greatly had a good time because of you, so thank you. Um, I also wanted to report that as part of the earlier conversation with the West Santa Ana branch, discussion, um, Congresswoman Linda Sanchez uh, was here and we hosted a tour for her to show her what it is that uh, the latest is with regards to that project and she was really thankful. She's excited about the progress. She's a absolutely key member in terms of obtaining federal funding for that project so I wanted to thank her for being here. Uh, I also, on May 4th, I was part of, a, um, of an event in Long Beach it's called the US Vets and it was a uh, basically uh, an event to uh, to show our veterans from multiple wars on how to be able to, uh, to help them in gaining employment. And so it was a nice discussion on, on being able to have uh, just skills on being able to find jobs. Um, as many of us up here know, for our veteran community, sometimes that's a big challenge. And so I wanted to thank them for inviting me. On a related note, um, I want to thank my brother-in-law, uh, Chris Reese, uh, my brother-in-law is a uh, proud member of our United States Army. Um, he is part of the 40th Infantry Division, and he's a, a military, military intelligence sergeant. Um, he's an E8, 
and he is about to uh, serve our nation in his fourth tour of duty. Um, he actually gets shipped out on May 20th of this year. He's been to Iraq once, and he's been to Afghanistan twice, and he's about to undergo his fourth deployment again to Afghanistan. Um, he will be uh, in a forward operating base, so and I wanted to thank him uh, for for his sacrifice to our nation, and also his family, and my uh, my niece and my nephew for um, letting us as our as a nation borrow him. Um, and lastly, I wanted to I'd like to adjourn this evening's meeting in memory of Lucio Canabi, um, who is the mother of former LA County Supervisor Don Canabi, who's a great friend of our city here in Bellflower. Lucio was born on Ju July 1, 1920, and she passed away on Saturday, May 5th, 2018, at the age of 97. She was the last survivor of 12 brothers and sisters. She was preceded in death by her husband of 67 years, Rayburn Kanabi, who passed 10 years ago. They loved to travel, play golf, and also enjoyed their periodic trips to the casinos. Lucille survived by children, Mr. Don Kanabi, who is married to Julie, Miss Lynn Hollibaugh, who is married to David, and Mr. Keith Kanabi, who is married to Ronnie Ann. Ms. Lucille Kanabi had nine grandchildren and 16, uh, and I think it's nine grandchildren and 16 grandchildren scattered amongst four states. Our deepest sympathies and heartfelt condolences go out to the entire Kanabi family. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Garza. And I would like to just share um, my joy with uh, a fundraiser that I put on every year. I happen to be a committee chair for the Bellflower Kiwanis' biggest uh, fundraiser they do, which is a silent live auction. For the first time in 32 years, we had it at a state-of-the-art facility here in the downtown area of Bellflower at the new main event center. 290 people were there. The event center can handle it. Uh, the caterer did an awesome job, um, so I just want to tell the community that you have a wedding, you have a big event coming, you have small events, uh, it's a dividable room, you can have 100 people events. Um, the main event center has the capacity and the, and the expertise to handle any, any, and I mean any, event that you can put out of, and it was just a wonderful job. And I just want to ring that bell for the city of Bellflower to be able to have their own event center and uh, to be able to do something like that for our community. And with that said, I'd like to adjour adjourn this tonight's meeting in memory of Lucille Kanabi and Dr. Paul Helver to the next regular meeting of the Bellflower City Council at 5.30 on Tuesday, May 29th, 2018. And a little note due to Memorial Day, that's when we're having it. Thank you. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well. Hey, we've had it before 10. <laughs> yeah. Good night, Thanks for coming. Have a nice conference. Enjoy. You have, a, have a nice last trip to Sacramento? Yeah, yeah, right. Let's see you next week. <laughs> we'll do it all over. Have a nice yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We won't see you Wednesday? You drive no, it. You drive it or fly it? You drive it or fly it? Drive it. Drive it? Okay. I'm gonna have a safe trip. I'm going to meet a, a high school classmate in Sonora. Oh, neat. Okay. Oh, so this might Male or female? Female. <laughs> of course. <laughs> What's Irma think about that? She probably that? has blue hair and a walker. <laughs> well, she knows it. She knows it. She knows her. Most of them are dead. Right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. They let us. All right. That's a wrap. Everything you say makes sense. No, it doesn't. Like, you know, he's tired of these people. They are talking to him.